It's weird not looking at Frank's face on this. On the because I'm mean, we're in person. I know. Usually it's, I have this right here to see just the one, uh-huh. and then your face is the rest of this. <laughs> I know this is actually a first. It is a first. This is a first. We're coming in. Where are we? We are. Well, first let's start the show. We are starting the show. We don't need to introduce ourselves every time. I've been told this multiple times now. By who? Multiple people, and Will Freeman being one of them. Okay, all right, so. He goes, you guys need to stop introducing yourselves. But what about if we have new listeners? They can go back and listen to the original ones and find out who we are. I'm Brian. I'm Frank. And I'm Mike. <laughs> and we have, and we got Mike. We have Mike in the middle. And the one thing I'm already doing wrong is I'm looking at the TV, the giant TV behind the camera. Yeah. And I'm not, I need to look right here. Anyway, Mike, Mike in the middle, welcome to the drop with... Hey. Yeah, you got to you got to sit up. Brian. You know, I can't or, be back here cuz yeah, it'll you, sound like I'm in the Well, you can hold it. No, I don't want to make bumping sounds and No, stuff. it won't make. This is heavy. It is. You can take it off of the base if you want. I'm just going to do curls the whole time. Yeah, yeah. I had to get my workout, guys. I missed the gym routine this morning. <laughs> we have to go Mobile. Mobile, Alabama. So what's up? This is cool. This is this cool. This is sweet. What'd get you your say? face towards this. So we this have a sweet. couple things. This is a couple things. This is the first time me and Brian have been in person doing the podcast. Usually we're talking to each other through FaceTime. Through this computer. Through right this here. computer and my computer over there. Uh, but yeah, this is the first time we're doing it live in person, which is kind of, it feels kind of weird. Yeah. It you want to say weird. where we're at and stuff? We are in San Luis Obispo. We've been out here for the C10 slowdown, which someone, <laughs> someone pointed out to me that it's the C10 SLO down. And slow, we're in San Luis Obispo, California. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's why it's the C10 slowdown, which seems obvious, until, but it wasn't very no, obvious. We both learned that at the same time on the way up here. That's right. Yeah. I, I knew it. Um, I'm not going to lie. I knew it the whole time before we came. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it makes sense. I mean, it's SLO. So let and me, I said the show is in San Luis Obispo. I thought it was like the. Like, like everything's slow. going so fast, and now we're gonna <laughs> slow down. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I see that. I see that. Low and slow. Yeah, low, low and, and slow. slow. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. So we let's. Uh, so this is. So we're out here in San Luis Obispo for the C10 slowdown show, and uh, it's been kind of a long, long trip, long process because you guys start off in Phoenix on Thursday, mm-hmm. rolled out to my place in the high desert by Thursday night. We rolled out here Friday. And so it's been a kind of a journey. And here we are Sunday. The show's over. The show's only one day. The show's over, and now we're sitting here with our friend Mike. Mike in the middle. I like it. I yeah, he's on the, the mic in the middle. Mike on the mic in the middle. And that, and, and for those um, watching and listening, you have seen Mike in Grinder TV videos. Mike yeah. on the mic. This is true. And now, you know what's so funny? is like, uh, do you remember at the Severed show last December how... Um, that guy came up to me and I was like, hey, it's Mike on the mic. And he goes, uh, oh, you came up with that? And then he's talking to me. And, then, and I go, oh, I don't know, maybe, maybe I did, maybe I didn't. I like to think so. And he goes, oh, that's cool. And he comes up to me. And this is actually before we started doing the podcast, so it made less sense. Right. And he comes up to me and he goes, um, yeah, man, oh, that, that's cool. He's like, I love all the stuff you do. I love your podcast, but sometimes I can't listen, like, listen to the whole thing. And I'm in my head, I'm like, I don't what know what this dude about talking me. about? I'm like, I'm not Ronnie. And he goes, oh! <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, that was my boy Garrett. Yeah. I remember oh, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's like, like, you're oh, the that's guy. my guy you're right the guy. there. I said, that's the guy. He goes, this is the guy? I was like, well, I mean, yeah, he's he's a guy, but a yeah, guy. that's then, the guy. And then we kicked into that whole And then he's like, swingers, oh, swingers you're not Ronnie. He's like, all right, move on. Then we, then we kicked into that whole Swingers movie reference. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? I got to say, you do have some pretty um, good taste in, in movies and mm-hmm. movie references, because you've been hitting with me all weekend. You touched my thing again. and. I know. No, I, I hit it. Um, I, I come in with some good pop culture. I'm, uh, I'm hip to the hip. times. As you <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you poised? Are you poised and a hip? Are you I, stir? Yes, are you definitely. perfectly poised? Are you perfectly poised you and know. poised hipster? They can't. They broke the mold with me, as they say. No, we're <laughs> alluding to the, that your, your truck Oh, my truck, my truck. Okay, <laughs> I get it. I kind of was a little narcissistic there. So, yeah, no. I would say, yeah, yeah. Yep. Good reference. So, first of all, we should let people know who you are and what you and like. All right, just give us yeah. a little. Right. Give, us a, give little us a little rundown. rundown. A little rundown of who who Mike is. Mike yeah. behind the mic. Mike behind the mic. I'm Mike Milan, uh, out of Phoenix, Arizona. Originally from California. That's why I think uh, you and I were collect. So we kind of had the same upbringing in that California atmosphere. Right. I still get called. People know I'm from California. 
when I'm in Arizona. But uh, yeah, because I didn't so. move to Arizona from California or anything. No. Yeah. No, right. he's, he's just, we know you. We know you are. <laughs> originally from California. Uh, Brian been, is not originally from California. Uh, no, no, I didn't spend 36 years there. No, I said I am. We're talking about me. You guys ask me questions. We know yeah, about yeah. you. We had seven well, episodes. No, but then you said already. you relate to him because I don't relate to you thing. though. I know. Well, I don't like you. But like, oh, uh, so. oh. skin color. Skin yeah. color. Okay. I, I'm just okay. gonna step out now. I'm okay. gonna step out. You guys can take just a break. Have... This is the Mike and uh, Frank show. Now. <laughs> oh, I saw that Photoshop <laughs> picture. You see that? That's hilarious. <laughs> that was so yeah. funny. Did I hit it? Uh, that's me, dude. I like to joke, though. That's me. I, I like having fun. I like to laugh. I like to crack jokes all the time and be funny. I just like having a good time. So. Uh, been around trucks and cars my whole life. I've always liked the stuff. I've always liked having cool stuff and cool cars. So as I got into high school and started driving and uh, started going, you know, illegal street races and stuff at night, uh, that's kind of how the whole car bug bit me. And then starting to see trucks and see, like, well, that truck is sick. That truck is lower than this car over here, than this Honda Civic. And that thing is way cool. I'd rather have a truck like that. And, you know, uh, especially like mini trucks. That's where I got into it from too. That's what I want to know about. I want to know about the mini truck stuff because you did a, a really, really good interview with Ronnie from C10 Talk. Right, and right. And if anybody wants to check that out, that is, it's a such a great story and it's so enthralling and it's it's just an amazing story. Yeah, so, and I, don't e- I don't even know if that could ever be repeated. Yeah. Like, it was, no, it's so, not. It, and yeah. that's what I'm, I'm not trying to do here on this like I, I've told that story I, I could tell it to anyone and ask me in person but yeah I had leukemia I went through cancer I'm a cancer survivor I had a uh, bone marrow transplant and came back and the C10 stuff is really recent stuff but mm-hmm. um, I like the C10 stuff but I went into this the C10 scene um, just kind of out of the mini truck just branching off because I wound up with this truck I was building, and I'm building it like a mini trucker, right? Like mm-hmm. I'm building it to rail, to skate low, and <laughs> to uh, throw some sparks and drag it. So no, I, that's what I built it for. That was the whole purpose of it from the beginning. But then taking it to uh, C10 shows, and you know the feeling when you're like the coolest ride, even if it's a bucket, like that thing was cut up and I would tow it to places, but it was laid out on some cool wheels. And a lot of people like, that thing is so cool. I'm like, really? Because if I go to a mini trucker show, like there's a lot cooler stuff that's laid out with nicer paint. Like this is under construction. But to you're them, talking about like, your truck, like my before? C10, like my oh, C10, okay. like uh, in phases, it, right? As oh, okay. okay. It's not, not now. It's, not it's now. bad. No, not, now. it's bad. It's bad it's now. Bad. It's fun. Um, but as the process went, right? So I built the truck and take it, took it to mini truck stuff. The first uh, C10 related thing I ever took it to was Dino's, as that thing started getting bigger and only really got involved with the C10 guys because you start looking for parts, right? And uh, junkyard, but then he's like, oh, junkyard quality versus what these guys happen to just collect. And they've been into old trucks, you know, with their parents and stuff, their dads. Well, let's, uh, let's back it up though real back quick. Back it up. Yeah, back let's it up. back it up to your first truck. My first truck. Yeah, so we're gonna go from the start to the, to the current. Sure. You know, cause like, uh, so, so you said you had a Colorado. In Colorado. Yeah. That's not my first truck. Okay, what was your first truck? My first truck, my first car was a Mercedes. It was a 190E. It was a used car. They hand me down from my older sister when she graduated. She got a different car and they gave it to me. Um, that thing was cool though. Uh, that's what kind of got me bit. There was another dude uh, my sophomore year and he was a senior and he had like those uh, uh, Celica when that body style changed to more of like the. Um, I would say like more square, more aerodynamic looking mm-hmm. in those like a 2002. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. And uh, he had air cylinders on it, right? Like, you know, people call them cans back mm-hmm. then. And that thing was so sick. And at the same time, Fast and the Furious was big and he was kind of racered out, but it was still clean and custom. And I was like, dang, that thing's cool. Like, I want that. So I hammered my Mercedes and put big wheels on 19 inch, 19 inch AMG wheels. That was big back then, right? Oh, yeah. And uh, that was like all my money I had in high school. So I had that car. But then started seeing other guys and stuff and show up again. And it's back to like those trucks, right? I said, wow, that thing's lower than my car. And mm-hmm. like, he can raise that thing up and go and take off. And so uh, I started getting that. So my first truck actually was an S10 um, extended cab, a 98 that okay. I had picked up. And I picked that was my up. first main truck. Yeah, it was my first one. And uh, I, you know, never, I, I didn't 
know much about bags, but I know I wanted them. And I would go and get like uh, supplies at different stores. Um, like what was the stores in Arizona called? Um, like, uh, like Desert Rat. So that's where I met John Trevino mm -hmm. when he was working at that. And I was maybe 16, 17 years old when I met him. And he was already, so yeah, around that, um, around those years, he had just started Perfect Poise. And so that was kind of big. So I remember seeing his so you, logos and everything. You had already moved to Arizona. I already moved to Arizona. Yeah, sorry. So I moved to Arizona um, when I was like 12 years old. 10, oh, okay. between 10 and 12, somewhere around there, I moved so to Arizona. So then you go to high school, you get your you go license. go to high school. My family does construction. So California and the work moving to Arizona and growing farther east. We ended up from, let's see, uh, born in West Covina, lived in Azusa, uh, Walnut, uh, Hacienda Heights. Um, as far out to Temecula, Marietta, and then finally to Phoenix, Paradise Valley, Scottsdale, and now living in Goodyear. Um, but yeah, so. So what truck, you have an S10, you meet John. Yeah. I meet John, and then I start to see, well, this is cool, so then I start going to car shows. And I think the first one I went to out there was one of the um, early Otter Noise ones at the. Um, the Bring the Noise show? Yeah, the Bring the Noise yeah. show. Bring the Noise show. So that was middle of high school, this is a long story. This could be real long, but it's after high school, did the truck stuff, moved to California, went back to California. I went to uh, Cal State Fullerton, um, Fullerton College there, the junior college, went over there, um, lived in that area, partied around, and then California. I, I, I mean, I knew John Trevino, but I wasn't friends with him. Right? I saw him at shows. I saw his truck. His truck was like one of the first ones that I saw in bags and actually sat inside and touched because it was at an audio shop I was helping out with. So now I'm back in California, and I start going to shows, and I, and I run into um, some guys in the club Sunset. Mm -hmm. And I heard a lot about him, and the w coolest dude I met over there was uh, Carlos. You know Carlos? Oh, yeah. Los? Los? Yep. Los. Los. Los, that's my boy. That's yeah, my daddy. Yeah, Los is a good dude. I say, Daddy, <laughs> when I see him. <laughs> oh, dude, I love it. I love his. That guy's so cool. And then learning about the history of mini trucks, and like they, they pride themselves on being one of the oldest truck clubs and stuff. Yeah. And it's so cool. So I learned a lot about like the rules of a truck club and the orders and the, you know, uh, the truck the, the club the etiquette, swats, the SWATs and truck stuff. Club yeah, etiquette. truck club etiquette. But yeah. that was really cool, and I like that was really cool. And I hung out with those guys uh, for about a year, year and a half, and then um, I came back to Arizona. So at that point, yeah, I had my Colorado. Yeah. I bought my Colorado after the S10. Um, that was like my, my graduation kind of thing. For, yeah. For hey, you did it. Good job. You made it through, <laughs> here's a truck. through school. Yeah, here's a truck. <laughs> So cool. I got that. It's supposed to be a work truck, but uh, the bug bit on that, and so I just lowered it probably ten times, right? Like, okay, now I have a seven six drop. Like this <laughs> thing is just scraping. What, I drove. What year Colorado was it? It was a two thousand six. When did the Colorados that generation? I think it was 04. Yeah, was I think it was 04. like 04. So they're 04. still, they're still new, so there's not a lot of parts. They never really made a lot of parts. No. no. Yeah, even now, there's I don't not think a lot of parts. No, no. Yeah. I don't think that no one really makes like a specific spindle for it still or uh, many. Yeah, they never things. really took off in the aftermarket. And they're so cool. I still like those. I, I would still they're want to love another one. I mean, yeah, that's what I have now, just a new style for a daily driver, my diesel Colorado. They're just a good sized truck. They make a diesel Colorado? Yeah. It could tow a lot, too. Like, it'd probably out tow that Titan. Probably. Is that a challenge? <laughs> yeah, we're gonna pull some drag. Let's hook them up. Let's push it up. Okay. We're gonna hook up my truck. Let me, to let your... me just tell you something. I have nothing to lose. <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing to lose. In my truck is worth about twenty five hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, same, same. <laughs> so the the um, do you, is it a Chevy thing? That's why you start out with an S ten and then a Colorado. Yeah, I think so. Okay, yeah, no, it is, and then it makes sense. So. My grandpa raised me a lot. Like he, I was work with him every weekend since I was a kid, and everything he always had was Chevy, and it was like nicer trucks. He always took care of it. He's the one that taught me about. I don't wash my truck anymore by myself, <laughs> we, we but I that used out. to. You guys experienced <laughs> that. We found that out. <laughs> and uh, Mike does not wash his truck. I, 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 let's not talk. The about truck it. gets oh, washed. The truck Mike doesn't wash it. It gets washed. It's just. I don't do it as much as I used to. We're not going to get into uh, your, into your into bougie that. life, no, you, don't, you don't want to even dip into that. <laughs> uh, no, so, yeah, uh, the Chevy truck, that I think, came from him because, you know, he, Southern California guy, would always buy Chevy from the Lou Grub dealership in La Puente, California. Oh, really? Yeah, and uh, 
So everything he owns. So the the suburban that I'm building, he bought that one brand new. That's right. You have a, So your your the hipster is was your pop's truck, right? It was my stepdad's truck. Yeah. And then now you have a suburban that was your granddad's. My truck. grandpa's truck. Okay. Yeah, and he's still around. And I'm trying to I'm trying to uh, get it finished to a point where he can come cruise. He stopped driving. He's 81. He's gonna be 82 this year. So, uh, yeah, I want to I want to show him because like my truck, the C10 was like a what do they call it, like a, a, a memorial built or something? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, to my step. Tribute, 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 tribute built. built mm-hmm. Tribute built. Um, but he'll never see it, mm-hmm. right? That's why, like, by my license plate says, sorry, dad. Because people say, like, oh, do you, what do you think if he was here, he'd love it. So, no, he hated it. Like, <laughs> he told me don't cut the stuff up. He was one of those. Yeah, you can't, those what dudes. is that? What, they can't haul nothing. So, that truck's not worth nothing. I don't want to cut you off, but yeah. the people that are listening to this might have no idea what we're talking about. Right, so. So. Because we jump, I like, from, I we jump. Scramble. I know just, we jump from Col- we jump from Colorado to C10. Is there anything in the middle? Oh yeah, we're not following. There's a lot of stuff in the middle there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Because we we need if we get to the C10, we got to talk about the C10. We can't go from this to this to this to this. I was only referencing the C10 and more that like that was his his stepdad's truck, yeah. and now he's building a suburban. Yeah. But you're right. We're we're missing some pieces in the middle. Yeah, so we're at the Colorado. In. At the Colorado, and then. There was so much cars in between there. Yeah, um, that's me. Like there's so like if I sat here and I like rattled off every single car that I drove yeah. or owned, it'd be kind of it'd be just droning on. Yeah, they said yeah. I saw a thing that says the average person owns five cars in their life. I'm like I am not average because I've owned five cars in just one year at one point, and they were no well, like nice cars. I'm talking like yeah. I'd buy. Uh, I went through a phase of uh, Mazda RX sevens. Like we were, oh, really? we were, we were drifting and street racing oh. in South Phoenix with some buddies, and that was it. But rotary so my, Mazdas, yes, yeah, rotary Mazdas. Yeah. Um, so first gen, second gen only, mostly second gen stuff. Now this is uh, after the Colorado. Um, no, I had the Colorado kind of, at the same time. Same time. Because the Colorado was like my daily ride of transportation, and it was brand yeah. new. Like right, like. I still would make car payments on it. Yeah. Oh. And so I didn't want to cut it up, but I oh. yeah. So I started little by little, like oh, mm-hmm. let's just start with this like Bell Tech three four drop, mm-hmm. and I can still drive it. I can get to job sites, and then it's like, but I can't tear it apart and have it down because I need it right. for work and I need it to be reliable. And it's a brand new car. I've never had a brand new car. So, um, yeah. So I at the same yeah. So that's why I was doing like the cars that the Mazda uh, car stuff. And then same thing uh, with the B2000s. I've had a couple of those. Oh, really? You've had some Mazdas? Yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. so, uh, you know, just crank the torsion keys yeah. all the way down and hammer it out and throw some, like, four-inch blocks in the back from AutoZone. And within a couple of hours, you're hammered and just... So you then you, you moved, So now you moved back to California and you were in Sunset. Yeah, I'm back and forth. This is in Arizona. This was, like, high school stuff. High school stuff. But then you got to Colorado and then... You got to Colorado... And that's when I, yeah, I, as soon as I got to Colorado, I, I was in, moved to California to go that, to school. And, you, that's your, and you got in your first mini truck club. Yeah, it was Sunset. Mm-hmm. And um, I wasn't bagged in Sunset. I was just um, But that's when the whole, the, the, the bug bit you kind of. The bug bit me, yeah. For, for, for sure. mini truck stuff. For mini truck stuff. Because truck you've stuff. just always been into cars, but the actual like mini truck stuff, that's when you really got into it with like Sunset. Yeah, yeah, I'd say that, yeah. Yeah, definitely with them is when I kind of said, like, oh, wow, this is cool. And then cruising in with other people as far as the That's club aspect, the too. Like, there's a mini truck part, like, oh, this is cool. But then it's, like, it's cooler showing with these people that you've been hanging out with, too. But not just that, not just, like, this club, but then other clubs mm-hmm. and stuff you start meeting, too. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, who's that guy? Oh, he's in that club. Like, well, that's cool. Like, we hang out with them? Like, yeah, everyone hangs out with everyone. Yeah, and it's not like it's a, no, we don't hang out with that club. Mm-hmm. Whatever, kick it away from you. Never know. It's not like that. Yeah. It's uh, so the mini truck bug bit you with the truck, and then the social part. Same. The social um, structure of clubs bit you after that. Yeah. Yeah. So did a couple shows there when I was in the Sunset Inland Empire cha- chapter with them. Um, went to your show back when it was still at Lake Paris Fairgrounds. Mm-hmm. That was pretty cool. Um, yeah. So a couple like uh, to kind of touch on a couple things that you were talking about. One is like you building your Colorado, doing stuff with it, because that was like your your main mode of transportation. That is like so many people in the mini truck scene. People were like building trucks, trying to like, 
you know, you work Monday through Friday, and then the weekend you're like, I, I want to do something. So you're trying to like bang it yeah, out so you yeah. can get mm-hmm. it going for Monday to go to work. <laughs> well, that's the story. Bang it out on Friday. As soon as you get home, start pulling stuff apart because Sunday by like, you better hope you're at it by noon putting that back together or else. Like, I mean, how many? I drove my one of my trucks, uh, my 86 Toyota, without a bed for like five months. Oh, yeah. So I drove so that Colorado. <laughs> it's okay. That Colorado's been through a lot. So I, I, I didn't bag it until I wrecked it. And I wrecked it one night um, coming home in the rain. And like I was out working in the mud, so my boots, I was still wearing my boots in the truck and they were caked with mud. And I'm going on the freeway and like this guy cuts me off and I should have just let him be, but I'm like, what a jerk. And so I pull over, I'm like, yeah, buddy, and flip him off. But like, as I'm going, like I'm going a little too hot into the corner. Uh (laughs) And so like, I try to hit the brake, but like my foot slips because oh, all the, the mud, mud on oh, it, geez. and like it slips and I hit the gas, and so as I'm turning, it's like turns sideways, and I hit a um, you know those like flashing uh, poles before you get on the freeway and the on ramp, oh, like huh. light ahead or merge ahead. Mm-hmm. I hit that thing. So you didn't learn much from your drifting. No, days. and the guy just like laughed at me. Well, no, he like drift- drove right by me. He's like, yeah, and I was like, yeah, karma, <laughs> instant karma. Oh. I, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> so, so I had the bet off because I didn't have much money, and that was still my only <laughs> mode of transportation. So I had the tow truck come, take it back. I cracked a wheel. And uh, it only hit right behind the cab, like missed the cab completely and just dented the side. Mm. They didn't do no other damage except hitting it right where the fuel filler is. And uh, so I had to pull the bed off and then try to track down a bed and I, I couldn't afford a new bed. So I was looking for other people that had a salvage truck or something that got a front collision with the clean bed. So I drove that around for a while with no bed. And there was one day I was driving and I got a blowout on the, like, the driver's side rear. And with no bed, like the wheel blew out, or the tire blew out, spun up and smacked the back window and shattered the back window oh, wow. while I was driving. Wow. I was like, Jesus, man. So after all that, I had to tear it down and I ended up repainting the whole truck when I got a bed. And then at that point, um, I just cut the bed and notched it, but still never bagged it um, until I met up with uh, Jamie. So, okay. I had the Colorado and I was in Sunset. When I came back and moved to Arizona, there was no Sunset chapter. Mm-hmm. And so you ended up getting Imperfect Boys? Well, not right away. Yeah. Not right away. I was hanging out with everyone. And I was hanging out with um, James Cummins from uh, yeah. If It's Got Wheels. And so he taught me a lot. And he kind of did the first back half we started on the, uh, on the Colorado and just got it adjustable in the back and got it on uh, air. Um, did that. I think I cruised to Parker with that one year for West Coast Nats. Um, and then it came back and I ended up having Andy Day redo the whole back half at one point. Yeah. And I never had that truck bagged in the front. I just never. Oh, it was only bagged in the back. It was bagged in the back the entire time. And, uh, but I wish I, I wish I did. But I ended up selling that truck in the end and uh, I got like $10,000 for it and used wow. that for my down payment on my house when we got married. Wow. Yeah, so sad. But anyway, so in between there was, you know, the Colorado I ended up bagging that after going to more shows and then kind of reuniting and seeing John Trevino again and Brett Taylor and Michael Fetters and all these guys that I had been hanging out with before, uh, that's when I started hanging out with them. And then one night I just said, yeah, you know what? You guys are cool. Like, I feel like this is a good fit. This is a good family that I want to be with. So um, what do I got to do? And so that kind of petitioning process went through, right? And What was the petitioning process? No, I, know, I don't know. Place? I just, I don't think I was ever like, oh, petitioning. You just, you just sort of like I just kind of hung around it. and one day it's like, yeah, we're cool with him, right? Like he's in. Yeah. Like, yeah. But this was, uh, sure, this was already at least, what, like 15 years ago. Wow. You said that, so Perfect Poison isn't a very old club because you said that know. Trevino 20. started it like in the... In 2003, I believe. Oh, okay. When they yeah, no, they've been around. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's so funny, like when you, when you think about time, because like, well, 2003, that wasn't, that's not that old. Yeah, like, and then yeah, you that's realize 20 years ago. That's 20, 20 years, years, ago. years ago. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Like, Especially when you start talking like, oh, 92, dude, like, oh, that well, was Well, that's the thing, it's like, ago. you know, Forbidden Fantasy's been around since 93, and, you mm. know. Um, oh, okay, let's pause real quick. Okay, so we're back. We had to take a little break. No, um, we're back. And nobody we're nobody back. knows we had to take a little break. Uh, no one knows we had to take no, a little we, break. we took a break. Because it's just going to go, cut, cut. Can we say why we took a break? No, we're not going to take... We're not even saying we're taking a break. <laughs> it's, pretty, it's pretty cool stuff, though. Yeah, but we didn't do anything. 
To the you viewer, didn't do anything. To the viewer and listener, this is seamless. We didn't take a break. Okay, so when do you want to pick up? So what are we were talking about? You said 93? I can't, I, I, that's one part that I heard. Oh, about. let's just, oh, we need a retake. God. Let's just do this whole thing over. Start it's 1030 over. now. We have to check out of this hotel soon. Yeah. Anyways, we had to cut because Frank screwed something up. <laughs> Mike okay. screwed something up. He had to run downstairs. So if this does, if, we're, if this cuts weird, th- we had we had a little. We, yeah. did, we, did we, a little. we basically took a break because uh, Mike and Brian had purchased some parts, and those parts needed to be drugs. Drugs. Yeah, <laughs> it was drugs. <laughs> it was not drugs. The box says not drugs. Can, can you turn your phone, phone off? off? God, what a rookie mistake! Is this your first podcast? No, I've done. This is like your fourth. Well, I did a bigger one than this. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. Okay, uh, so no, moving okay. on. But real quick, we had to get some parts. Big shout out to Jacob Stone. He hooked us up. Brian picked up his. Uh, we talk. We talk about your. Oh no, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we picked up his uh, front end kit for uh, his OBS, and I also got a kit for my suburban. Which is what the last which, thing that we were talking about. Which is just segue right into the suburban. Yeah, so the suburban. Suburban's next up on the list. Uh, I just sold my blue. Mazda 3 wagon uh, that kind of got passed around from club member to club member. And it's only right that we sell it to another club member. So my boy Luke in Perfect Poise, Washington, picked up the Mazda and has quite the adventure getting home from Arizona to Washington, 24-hour drive. Uh, so anyways, yeah, so now got some parts for the Suburban, and that thing's going to be fun, uh, especially when you come to shows like this. And I didn't bring my wife and kids with me. Um, it was kind of three dudes crammed in the truck on the way out here, and that was mm-hmm. fun. But... Um, the Suburban, ideally, um, I want to build it to take to shows, show, but also haul my truck to shows. Oh, Enough cool. room for my wife and kids, plus the luggage in the back, because that Suburban is long. So. Yeah. So is you, it a, is you, the, it's, gonna have, it's got a six liter that you built for Yeah, it? so I got a six liter that uh, another guy in Perfect Poise, Brad Raff, uh, he built one for a guy. And um, the guy, it sat for a year, and I said, hey, if that guy wants to sell it, I gave him like a super cheap price on it. It was built. Brad does... Amazing stuff, all Texas speed. It's really built. Oh wow! And uh, that's, that's the guy cool. ended up saying, "You know, what? I'm not gonna do this no more. Your buddy can buy it for that ridiculous price." So come, I went right down, picked it up. Um, I had another buddy of mine, um, another vlogger, Robbie, Robbie V. He mm-hmm. does his channel. Oh yeah, with the, the guy with so, the yeah. uh, the drag racing. Yeah, S10. yeah. Mm-hmm. He's got a cool setup. So his garage. I asked him. He helped me. Um, you know, he works at Speedway, um, motor parts or whatever mm-hmm. the, the, the supply store. So he hooked it up, and then he helped me assemble. And kind of re put it all together. So it's, it's pretty cool. It's all painted to match my truck. A lot of people ask me, it's even at this show, hey, I saw that 6.0. Is yeah. that for your uh, C10? I'm like, no, I wish. I kind of, I kind of flash a little bit and, and act like it is. But no, I built that for the Suburban. Um, 6.0, 4L80 is pretty well built, beefy, real torquey. And I uh, want to haul it. want to bring my family to stuff like this where it's comfortable driving, can do those trips. That Suburban was my grandpa's, right? He bought it brand new, I said. Um, and I remember taking trips back and forth from cool. Arizona to California and um, laying out, you know, those seats all fold down and it's one big flat area. And That's so me awesome. and my sisters would just like camp out there, you know, snacks and stuff. Before there was tablets and TVs and everything, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. doing Mad Libs and uh, before TVs. slug bugs and... Before TVs in vehicles. In vehicles. <laughs> oh, remember those cool vans that you used to have? I had a friend that had one of those Chevy vans with the cool, like the cool TVs to watch South Park videos and stuff. My on parents the had a. Uh, they still have it actually. It's a 2000 F three fifty crew cab, and it had like I remember when they bought it, and they were just like, check this out. And it's and it had a TV in the back, but it was a tube TV yep. with a VCR. Yes, in yes, it. yes. That's what my buddy had. We used to watch all the South Park tapes because I wasn't allowed to watch South Park like, in my house. And so when I'd go with him on trips, it's like, yeah, dude, put that elephant and pig thing on, dude. Let's watch that. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, that's really neat. So it's and that's one thing, kind of to, to go back on your C10. That's one thing I really like about your C10 is because we we were cruising around that thing. Oh yeah, that was fun all weekend. I had an absolute blast. Yeah. That was so cool. You get down in that thing. I did. Like dude. it's a it's a, a, a it's an expensive truck. Like it's an expensive build and, and there's a lot of time and effort and money put into it, but you get it, man. Like yeah, we, man. we were we were getting on the freeway and this dude just stomps and just on the oh, freeway dude, that's it. starts time. dragging it on the freeway. Uh, that that truck, I don't think you you lifted it up any more than no. a few inches the whole time. No, I heard the Will Freeman podcast uh, before we left on this trip, and it's funny because he mentioned like just riding as low as you can all because you don't want to be seen. I don't want to be seen 
any anything above two inches off the ground. Like to me, if someone sees me donked out and fully locked up, it's mm -hmm. just it's not cool. Especially when there's cameras out and now, I do it for show. Like that's that's, but, all, that's why I built it. So it's funny because these guys have nice trucks. They're buying these big frames and stuff, and they're the last thing on their mind is dragging their frame at you know these chassis that they bought, and. Uh, so they're like, what do you have on there? Do you have like plates on your truck that you slide on? I'm like, no, there's like skis, basically. There's Oh, that's what you're saying. There's like plate welding. So on yeah, we, uh, me and er Ernie Baca taught me this because he has that Lexus that he oh, just uh -huh. yeah. drags too. And that thing's juiced. And um, he said, get these. So we went and bought like eight foot sticks of a half inch plate thick, two inch wide. And then we welded them to the side of my rails, well, on the bottom of my rails, mm -hmm. all the way down. Not all the way down, but we, we welded good strips all the way down so they don't come off, but uh, bent them up in the front right where the Z's at for the body drop. So it was just like skis, 100% like skis. So I just lay the it's back smooth. down first and then on it, and now I've drugged through body enough that everything's kind of level with the frame and body. So Yeah, and, so the, and I was going to say, like, so you're building this really, uh, really nice six liter for your Suburban. Yeah. But the... And I don't know where this is, and I've said this before, and maybe I said it to you. So there's a clip that Brian did, and you're talking about your truck, and this is like a couple like uh, versions ago. Right. So it's not the current version it was, but it was still like pretty nice. Yeah. And you're like, he's all like, yeah, tell me about your truck, and you're like, oh, it's a, it's a C10, you know, step side, blah, blah blah, and then he's all, what do you have for a motor? And you're like, it's just a clapped out 350. <laughs> yeah. And that was like when I saw that, and I don't know where it is because that that didn't happen. Though. What are you talking? Is this another one of those? Things it that is. I'm this is up? another thing that I think. Because we've talked about this, I did an interview with Mike for Grinder TV, um, but we never did anything with it. Where did I see that? I swear, I swear, I saw it. Because as soon as I heard it, I was like, "That's cool. That's like the, that's like so that's like the mini trucker mentality." And 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 so being at this show this weekend, like this is my first like C10 show, yeah. the, the C10 slowdown, which Mike won a trophy right here for our, for our visual viewers. C10 Soto Mike got a top 25. For our audio listeners, we're pointing at this very nice, heavy billet trophy that was a top 25. So this was my first like C10 show. And I was kind of um, kind of just immersing myself in it, kind of getting the feel for the culture. And, a lo and I may be wrong, but a lot of these guys probably wouldn't say that. Like if they had something like that, they probably wouldn't be like, oh, this is like... They would never say like, "Oh, this is just like a right. uh, whatever." This right. is like a three fifty. But you like have this attitude that's like, "Yeah, that's what it is." I I I rail it, I drive it, I stomp on it. You know? Yeah. It's it's, it's you're like the hybrid mini trucker C ten guy. Yeah, exactly. And so I think that's what I'm getting at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like so, that term, a hybrid. Yeah. yeah, that's what it is because you're in a mini truck club. Yep. But you're also immersed in the C ten scene. Yep. So immersed that you're on the artwork for Dino's Get Down this coming year. Yep. yep. So congratulations that's on cool. that. Yep, that's, that's cool. Huh? You know, like you went to you did the LST, the C10 cruise out there, and met a bunch of those guys, and it's just um, yeah, you're like bringing the mini truck mentality to the C10 world yeah. by dragging and stuff because a lot of these guys don't do it. I mean, there's mini truckers in the C10 world. Absolutely. You can tell like by walking around the you show. You can definitely tell which ones are the mini truck right. built. What trucks. guys like the Chevy C10 guy, and then the 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 one guy's like the rat rod hot rod guy, and then the oh that's the mini truck guy. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because I, I came across a truck like that. I was walking around trying to get a feel for what I like and what I was attracted to. And I was attracted to those builds. And I come, came across this one. And just looking in the bed, like no one needed, needed to tell you anything. You look in the bed and it's fully open. The link bars are painted a wild color. Mm. You know, the the frame. It, it's You could just tell like, oh, that's definitely a mini trucker built that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The ones that are completely super laid so out. The thing is, is like. So if I'm if I'm completely making up that up, where did I get it from? Because I had to get it from somewhere. Maybe it was on one of his stories. No, it was. I on like YouTube. it. It's a good story. Do you remember story, saying though. that? I, it's something I would say. It's, it's, well, yeah. You know, okay, maybe. Uh huh. Is it on the end of that the the COVID video I did when we were? Because I put a teaser clip. Oh, maybe that's what it is. Is that what it is? I think so. Huh. We're gonna have to look that up. Yeah, we'll have to. Well, I, I, I mean, on facts and stuff, right? I'm a fact checker. Yeah. yeah, I'm the guy that works for Facebook. <laughs> uh, yeah, so yeah, that's that's that is Brian said it perfectly. That's what's so cool about you and your personality is you are this like hybrid, you know, mini trucker kind of guy. Do you feel like do you feel like you fit? Which one do you feel like you fit into more? Do you just like everything? I I, I, I feel like I can fit in 
anywhere. Not yeah. like it's not saying that, but I, I told you guys on the way up here, right? So my life in a nutshell, I moved so many times. I was in almost a different school every year. The only schools I went consistent were like ninth and tenth grade, eleventh and twelfth grade, two years of high school at two different schools. Um, so I've Good. learned to kind of adapt, and I just I mm-hmm. can fit in almost anywhere. Um, I like people. I don't ever have bad stuff to say to people. Um, I like the energy of people. I just like that we all have something in common. Yeah. And that we're all here to hype each other up and look at it. Like it's, I like them both. Like um, the C10 stuff is, is cool. I'm new to it. I've only maybe been hanging around this stuff for the past three or four years since I've kind of got my, my um, truck buttoned up and to mm-hmm. a point. Um, but it's, it's, it's kind of a different scene in the sense, right? Where It is really different. Like just being here this weekend and kind of checking it out. And I'm, I'm not saying anything negative about either one. No, 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 it's I just, know. It's just different. Like it's a totally different scene. It's got the same kind of like fundamental things where it's obviously trucks and, right. and stuff like that. But uh, it's like the the clubs, the people. It's got the same vibe of kind of like meshing together and everybody kind no, of does yeah. their own thing. One thing that I noticed this weekend and I was, t- I was telling Brian, is like, when you go to a truck show, you talk more, like you go to a truck and you're looking at different mini trucks, or and, and when we say mini trucks, we always mean mini trucks, full-size trucks, cars, everything. Right. But we use mini truck, and uh, mini trucks is a, like this blanket term. And so um, when we go to a, a mini truck show, we look at Tacomas and S10s, and it's not like, we don't really focus on the vehicle part of it, although like that, like, some people preference Toyotas, some people preference uh, S10s, but we don't really focus on that part. We're like, oh man, that sick shaved door handles, body drop, you did this to your interior, you know, you got these wheels, like those are the things we focus on. The thing that I, I noticed this weekend is people are very like vehicle and year specific. So people are now talking like, oh, this is an 83, you know, with this is an 83 to 84 grill type, and then this is a Scottsdale step side, and, and like I think. That was the the most interesting part for me is just seeing the difference in like the focus. Yeah, because it would be like going to mini truck nats. It would be like going to Nissan hard body or Nissan truck nats. And so you have uh yeah six twenty seven twenties hard bodies and frontiers, and you would only be able to talk about the years because they're all Nissan. Mm-hmm. So you go to a Chevy show, they're all Chevys. Mm-hmm. And they're essentially all C ten. So the, what different differentiates them is the years. So that's the like the, the the you hear that in the, the conversations mm-hmm. as I was walking around like seventy four oh no it's a seventy five this this and that whereas a mini truck show is like oh you it's a Tacoma or it's a Nissan right. yeah it's, it's a, right, a Tacoma S10. but this one's body drop to the doors and then this one's not and then yeah they don't you know, they don't talk about years too much right. We, right we focus more on like the build it's that's i think that's mm-hmm. what i'm trying to say we focus more like on the build itself yeah not which ls number you have and then and i'd say that's the difference that's the <laughs> right and as far as you go to show so i learned this going to one of these c10 shows one of my first ones i went to was like the brothers truck show the oh, brothers okay. uh brothers is like a truck mm-hmm. catalog that's specifically built for these chevy trucks from what like the 60s to the 80s nothing newer than that nothing older than that um so i went to the show and I'm used to the way we go to mini truck shows and get judged in classes, right? And that's how if you want to win a trophy, you got to have these because this is how they judge or whatever. Well, here was like people judging and like you fill it in. It's a, what, what do they call it? Like a spectator judging or like everyone vote your best ride. They're oh, going to give trophies uh, to like peer to peer. It's like you're getting voted yeah, by your peers. Yeah, like okay. you voted by peers. And so like I never had my paper on my dash and stuff. Then they had like their picks of um, what they were best of different categories, maybe like top 10 of those. But one thing I realized is like, this is a classic truck show, not a Um, custom truck mm -hmm. show, not a custom car show. So guys that are winning are, well, yeah, I have a 67 and it's original numbers matching. The paint color is this uh, desert fawn beige that's original. Uh, The only thing I added was some chip foos wheels to it to make it look real cool. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Like, what do you have done to yours? I was like, well, it's a 76, but I have a 94 for Chevy front end on yeah. it. It's bagged and body drop. It's you know, a special what? bed. And the guy's like bored already. Like, <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right, man. So I you was know, walking away from that. And my truck was like just freshly painted everything. And like, I don't know. I, I like winning trophies. I like having cool stuff. And mm-hmm. I know you guys have talked about this. And like, no, I, I like it. And I get kind of bummed out if I go somewhere. And it's like, wow, man, like people love this thing. Well, then it's like. No, they don't, because I don't have nothing to prove people love this. Mm. Like, I proved my love for you. Mm-hmm. Why is there love conditional for me? <laughs> so it's, uh, 
I don't know. I, I don't want to sound like cocky, like I need a trophy going somewhere. Mm-hmm. Like, this is cool. This is just the icing on the cake in this experience. Mm-hmm. Um, coming out here this far, it feels good. Like, yeah, this was a cool trip. We had fun together doing this. I have something physical to take home to remember that, too. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I'll think of this. I'll think of me and you last night dragging that truck Yeah, that was and stuff, dude, I had and, so much fun. And that's why I love that thing so much. Like, that's what I built it for. And I've learned how to drag it better now because of my bumpers that I've already gone through and destroyed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and those are all metal and but i just know like look i i have a pretty decent living i i hope i can live for a long time and keep up with my habits of what i like doing but it's like in the end it's just metal mm-hmm. i could sell my kid and fix it you know no problem your kid yeah both of them yeah. that's how much eye candy costs to do <laughs> 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 no uh, uh i'm just kidding but it's, it's just it's fun and that's what i built it for and like mm-hmm. my most excited thing this weekend was doing that with you like you were slipping here that's fine you you crashed out but me and him we, we were lived getting, it so, all so over I've, this I've, 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 I've done hung out with you in your truck like that so yeah you did I'm you're like, okay like, <laughs> yeah yeah experience. i'm like gonna let no, frank you, like, this actually this week and this whole thing was like I was like super stoked to bring Frank to this, you know what I mean? Because I was stoked to bring Frank to so this. So was I. Too. Not on, not just because, um, like to show like this is fun too. You need to like this type thing, but just like there, it's just fun to do yeah. it. Like, no, it was a ton of fun. Yeah, like and when we met up with the guys in Long or in uh, Ventura. That was cool. Seeing all those trucks, like it doesn't matter if it's a Toyota or what. It, it doesn't matter what it is. A mm-hmm. group of guys in slammed trucks yeah just it's cool going down the highway yep. is different cool. colors bright colors you know it, that, it that doesn't matter so cool. what it is a group of trucks going down the highway it's just super low it just yeah. gets your it just turn get your go your it's motor, cool. motor go or however you want to say yeah, it. yeah so don't ever like not go to something because you think it's this just go sure. and have a good time yeah because the 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 journey is what is the most memorable it's not the it's not the destination. It's, it's the, the journey. journey. It was fun, and I was uh, talked about in the last episode how I kind of obsess about trucks, and I obsess about like showing off, you know, people's trucks. And this whole weekend, my Instagram stories has been nothing but his <laughs> truck. Yeah. yeah, it is like nothing we but him and his truck. Yeah. Every story is like, "There's Mike. There's the truck. We're going here." And we were all over this town. We left the show. Uh, the show is over. We came back to the hotel. We jumped in his truck, we cruised down to the beach, took some photos, a little bit of video, beautiful sunset, jumped in it, went over to the after party at this brewery and uh, hung out there for a little minute and that was cool. Jumped back in the truck, mobbed across town. It was it was so cool, it was an experience. And you know what, and you were saying that like, you know, Will saying about how he drives his truck and how you drive your truck, it is motivating me to drive my truck now. Yeah. So like all of this, like being in this, you know, doing this thing, going on this trip and going around in your truck, now I want to go home, pull my truck out, and go for right? a cruise. Yeah. So it sort of like invigorated me a little bit. And I bit. just like, I don't, like the first night we got here, well, so let's step back first, because you talk about being excited for Frank to come. I've been thinking the whole time, because even like for a week, so once he told me Frank's in for sure, let's go, like, I'm like, oh, I, got, I have to go all out for this guy. <laughs> like, I need to show him a good time, because I've been watching Custom Life videos for a while, and I remember like your vlogs and your camera, you out at... It's your videos, obviously, but you're filming like at uh, Forbidden at the Abbey, and you're out there, and it's like it's two a.m. and we're still out here. And I was like, dude, Frank likes a party. Like, I, I got, like I have to show this guy. And then you're like, hey, if you can keep him with free beer, he'll be wherever you want. I'm like, all right, you so that, I got, yeah, awesome. so I like, all right, we got to get a bunch of beer. We got to get a bunch of beers. But no, it was cool. So we could have easily left my truck at the spot Friday night and just packed up here and just kicked it, but. I like the way my truck comes alive at night with all it the does. lights oh, and yeah, stuff. Yeah. It does. So I was like, no, we have to bring it back here because Frank's here, man. And yeah. like, our hotel is the party spot tonight, so I have to be there. And I'm glad. it. But yeah, to, to have it there, leave the show, and then pick you up. Like, hey, let's go to the beach. They said it's 10 minutes from here. Let's go get some. Hey, you know what? There's an after party. Hey, you know what? I'm hungry. The kitchen's closed. We stopped and got pizza downtown. At it, was, like it was midnight awesome. Just almost. cruising. Just there's... I. And it, yeah, because you forget sometimes. Like you get so like for us when this is what we do and we and we go to shows and stuff. You kind of almost forget about the little things. And cruising last night with the windows down and it, and we're out here in San Luis Obispo and it is chilly. Yeah. Like it's not yeah. like you guys just came out of like a hundred and ten fifteen degree weather. It was like sixty eight all weekend. Yeah. So we're Beautiful. cruising the truck. Windows down. It's chilly. The air's coming in. The music's just bumping. The truck is like inches off the ground. The lights, like a UFO, just cruising down the road. Yeah. All of that, and you just like, it's it's. And then I'm like, man, this is it. 
this is this is it. This is what it all comes down to. You got that this feeling moment in right here. Yeah, oh yeah, no, totally, dude. Next I felt I haven't felt Oof. that cool in a while. Yeah, I got chills. <laughs> Let me tell you that I haven't felt that cool in a while. <laughs> Frank's gonna go get his forerunner. He's gonna get motivated, right? So picture this: he takes it, okay, washes it. He's like, so, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go cruise the town. And he gets out there and he gets on Bear Valley Road right outside of his pad. Steps on the gas and it just goes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, because no, it's, it's, like, it's like a V8. <laughs> a, a Milan's truck is a straight pipe V8, yeah. and mine's a, a V6. And it's all... <laughs> Mine's just a monster. I turn the corner to get around that's, him. That's so funny, because I told him, I said, you know, I, I haven't had a, a, a V8 anything besides, like, my truck. I haven't had a V8 in a long time. I forgot how much I love yeah. the sound of a cammed out, yeah. exhausted V8. Mm -hmm. It just, there's... Like when, when we first got on that cruise and we left that parking lot and got on the freeway and everybody just started romping on it. I got I got chills. I'm like, this is so awesome. Mm, yeah. Just whoa! It's yeah. just like that that that's what I that's what I took it away from this. Honest, all this all these V8s and stuff. It's it's there, so good. There is definitely nothing like the sound of a V8 mm -hmm. with exhaust or without exhaust, whatever. You know what I mean? Like just a V8 in general. Yeah, it's just something that it uh, sounds so good. Yeah, no, the truck is so cool. And the other thing that I love about your truck is the. And I get it, and the reason I'm attracted to trucks like that, because I mean, there's ton, there's hundreds and right. you know, thousands of trucks out there, but I'm attracted to certain trucks because, like, uh, your truck, Jaime Silva's truck, uh, Eric Almeida's truck, those the person's personality spills into the vehicle, and you can see it, and like I can see you in that truck, yeah, like the the small details, like when you talk about the air tanks wrapped the same. Uh, in the same design as the seats, and then the seats spill into the the door panels and the carpet, which spill into the the uh, the lights. Like everything just clicks and flows, and you can see that. Like this is definitely your personality flowing right. through this. Because if you, I mean, like let's say if you you plunked yourself in like just uh, any other truck, doesn't I'm, I'm not talking about anybody's truck in particular, just anybody else's truck, it wouldn't it wouldn't look right. You know right. what I mean? So, but you sit in your truck, and you drive your truck, and it's like it's like you're spilling out. You know what I th it. I think that's um and I don't want to say this and I don't want to say this um to to talk negatively about someone's honking outside. Someone's honking yeah, outside. Sorry. Um there's two things I want to bring up. We actually never talked about what his truck was. Yeah, I know we've been kind of just talking about yeah, it. Yeah, so what is your truck? What what's the year and what what did, have you done to it? Uh it's a uh, 2019 Chevy Colorado <laughs> diesel. <laughs> not the one that we should have oh, drove. Oh, okay, not the one we should have drove. That's a, it's a 76 uh, C10 Chevy um, step side factory that we did some modification to the bed uh, with some fleet side um, just to follow some lines. It looks cool. It looks weird from some angles. Um, so you basically took a fleet side bed, cut it down the middle, uh, narrowed it, and then put step side fenders yeah, on that. Not me. Brandon Cisco did well, the bed. Someone, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and then it, it's body dropped. Uh, yes, the truck is a, like a stock floor body drop. Um, lays pinch, which isn't that cool. No, like, I wish I would have went lower. No, we should probably just stop stuff. this podcast. Yeah, yeah. Brian said so that. Hey, all right, we're done. Thanks. You guys have a good yeah, one. We're gonna we're gonna get another guest. Don't even shake my hand. But like, and you got it from your. It was your stepdad's truck. It was my stepdad's truck. Um, when he passed away, he left it, and um, I I really had no interest in an old truck. Like I wanted another Colorado, or I wanted um, like a space cab or something. I wanted a mini truck. But then when someone in our club, at the time, had a, a frame that they had built for um, another one of their brothers who wasn't in the club or anything, but he's like, hey, we have this. Uh, we have a frame that'll fit that. Like it should be the same mounts as a fleet side, right? And I, was like, I don't know. Well, you can make your own mounts anyway, so it doesn't matter. Like, okay, what do you want for? He goes, well, give me like two hundred bucks. Like, oh yeah, I have two hundred bucks. So give him two hundred bucks, and it was a. Uh, it had the it had a four link in the back, and it had already like the Z and notched um, with the front, a uh, ninety four front end mm -hmm. Chevy front end full size Chevy. Um, didn't have arms or anything. It just kind of had just a frame rolling in the back. And just the kind of Blake front end in the front. So got some arms made from one of the guys in Washington, sent them out, and uh, started piecing it together. Pulled my cab off one day by myself in the garage. I did all this by myself. Did the cab swap in my garage after we got the frame kind of dialed in. And uh, once I put the body on, it just it looked like something cool. And I was like, oh, yeah, wow, saw these are cool body lines. Like, mm -hmm. 
it's not a fleet side and the steps, it's just something about it sucking you up in there. It looks like a dually, like a dually laying out hard on some big wheels. Um, and that's kind of was like, all right. Well, then I'm like, well, shoot, I'm in a mini truck club and this is like a classic truck. And let's see, who didn't, not many people had them. So again, back to Will Freeman's, he was talking about that guy from um, Down to Earth that was showing up with that super doored. And Chris. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That brown one, mm -hmm. right? I think it was dope. It was so black. it was black. Black. It was or it was yellow before. And then black. a couple colors. Yeah, it's been all sorts of colors. Um, Two colors. Never brown. Never brown. Yeah. So when those guys like had those, shows, I was like, oh, well, these like these are cool mm -hmm. because he's bringing that thing's dope. And so I don't know. I've, I've still I've, I've kind of danced around. That's why like mini truck shows are hard for me to go to. I don't say hard to, but I don't feel like that truck's a mini truck mm -hmm. or like you know what I mean. Like I don't. I feel like it's gonna be harder to get attention because people are like, oh, that's just an old Chevy truck. Just like I used to be. Oh, that's just an old Chevy truck. I'm here to see the hard bodies that are bagged and bodied. You know, I wanna see the Tacomas that are dope and I don't wanna see old truck shows. I'll go to a Dino show if I wanna see that. But now it's like, well, here's what I gotta do because I am a mini trucker. I wanna do this kind of stuff. I wanna drag the crap out of it. But I also like, want to have a nice classic truck that I can go to for these things. So so that's the hybrid. The hybrid. I, yeah, and I think I think people just appreciate, like, the, at least the mini truck community just appreciates cool. Yeah, like I think so. Yeah, they, And that's they, why I do the hood rat stuff I do, is uh, dragging on the freeway and sliding mm -hmm. it out. Because I like it, too. And that's what I want people to be like. I'm not afraid to do this stuff. Like, it's mm -hmm. not destroying anything. Yeah. No, you're, the, you're just having fun and using having it fun. for what you built it for. Yeah. And yeah, especially that, at night, it looks so cool. Like, you got some sick videos last night with, like, the lights shining and the sparks yeah. flying. And the uh, and that's what I was kind of getting to be before this is um, that's what the C10 community or shows. The difference between that and a mini truck show is there's less personality right. in the mm -hmm. vehicles at C10 shows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I was, yeah, I was know, careful and, to and, say that, but yeah, you said Yeah, I don't want to, like you know, knock anybody or knock mm -hmm. anything. But, um, yeah, you go to, you can go to a mini truck show and like, they don't sell seats for a mini truck that you could just buy off the no, shelf. No, they don't sell no. a dash. They don't sell door panels. They don't sell any of that stuff. So each truck is, is different, whether it's, you know, the older trucks, the stuff falls apart. So you have to do custom interior or you have to do, you know, like his interior is custom. So it flows into everything else. Where a lot of these other trucks, it's just, oh, that's a TMI bucket seat. Oh, that's a Snowden yeah. bucket yeah. seat. Yeah, the material might be different, and but this, but at the sense, most of like they 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 start to look the same. That's my and that was my assessment before coming yeah. to the show, and it kind of reaffirmed that. And but so, it's it, sorry, Will, I'm gonna do it again. <laughs> but there's no, I'm not talking negatively about that. That's just that's just how it yeah. is. And that's but fine. there are custom ones out. There are some ones that are just so custom. Yeah. But it, but, but it, those are the ones that made me kind of stop in my tracks, like. You know, I was walking past, you know, a bunch of trucks, but then I came across that red one, that really red right. chopped one. But I was going to say, it's fine to be the same because these are classic. Exactly. Yeah, I I what that's what it goes back I to. The custom saying. car show, classic car show. Yeah. And I feel mm -hmm. like these car shows out here for these specific C10 yeah. ones are a good little mixture of both. Mm -hmm. And it's, Where and you and have it, the it, guys it, who want to go yeah. to like the Pismo Beach shows and have like the classic. Yeah. But it's also like when you go to a mini truck show, they're all cut up. Yeah, right. So everything. he's like, "This is it's cool." A custom. So almost cutting up a C10 is actually more sacrilegious. That's true. Than yes. cutting up a mini truck. Correct. Mm -hmm. You're cutting up a truck that could potentially be worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah, like whatever it is. But so, if you take your truck, for example, or a you know just a body dropped, even if it's a factory sheet metal C10, to a to a classic truck hot rod show like a burger cruise night mm. they're gonna be like, oh i what like that is term. this yeah mm -hmm. what you you cut this thing up yeah. so now they're the mini trucker of the c10 world right no, right that's kind of perfect yeah. that's where i fit in i've had yeah. that experience yeah. is what i'm saying and and have you had people like old school c10 dudes come yeah. up to you and be like mm -mm. yeah <laughs> yeah no they have they have they're like i don't i don't like it i don't like it okay <laughs> yeah like that's fine. <laughs> okay. I do, yeah. but no, that's I, that's why I like the mini truck, and that's why I kind of brought that mentality to this, because yeah. like I think mini truckers a little bit more like thick skinned where we could take like some criticism between each other, I think and so. mm. we talk trash to each other a little more than these guys do, right? And it's also like you don't want to be the same, 
Like if someone's already did it, mm -hmm. you don't want to be like, well, you just copied that guy. Yeah. And you look mm -hmm. the same. We're out here. It's like acceptable. Like, yeah, I copied him because we're copying everyone else and everything out of this catalog yeah. we could buy. Mm -hmm. Where it's these guys are like, well, no, I took this dash out of like Will's doing something in his car, his truck. He said, right? He wants to put like a new like a like a new dash cell. In there. Yeah. Uh, and that's what you got to do. So when I came into this, I said, well, I, I need to be different. Mm -hmm. Like I'm a different kind of person. I can stand out with or without my truck, anyways. I just I need something though that suits my personality that I'm gonna be happy in, mm -hmm. you know, driving. And when someone says, "Oh, my dad used to have a truck just like that," I say he did not have a truck <laughs> yeah. just like yeah, this, buddy. Yeah. Like it's uh, what if he did? He busted out a photo. <laughs> he, he goes, just, no, he did. He had the uh, Benton version and everything and bag and body. Yeah. Like, oh, okay, I feel. I like, ran into a little. I have a little story about that too. I ran into that this weekend, so I'm out filming. And I come and I funny like funny. I came across this little Chevy Love, and it was sick. It was bright blue, mm -hmm. had patterns on the dash. These like little uh, thirteen or fourteen inch chrome wheels. I'm like, that's what I like. So I'm like over there filming it, and the guy comes up to me. He's like, oh yeah, this is this, this is my club, or I forgot what he said. He's like, this is my. He's let me show you my truck. So I said, okay. So he shows me his truck, and it was a like an early '70s style C10, uh, beautiful black paint job. It was a beautiful truck. I I cannot deny it was a beautiful truck. But what I found fascinating was, is he said, yeah, this is my truck and there's so many like this, but I wanted to be a little different. So I did uh, these, these smoothie wheels and I added this light bar on the inside. And I'm like, and that's cool. Like, I'm like, that's really cool. But in my head, I'm like, that's not really, do I mean, that's not a lot to be different. We're, we're, we're mini truckers though. Yeah, I know. But see, so that's, like, that's what we're talking coming about. Coming to like, like the regular Joe, talent. that's different. Like, oh You're my right. God, you added the, the, this, like this pinstripe on the hood. That's crazy. Yeah. And it's like, that's really like. Oh, so why so, isn't it not bodied and sectioned? Yeah, so you <laughs> right? didn't cut the pinch off and just lay rocker and then just yeah. like, yeah. It's crazy. You know, it, talking throughout all these episodes and kind of like talking our way through our whole scene and the people in it, it's really fascinating the, the mentality that we all have. And mm -hmm. I always refer back to what you said, that many truckers aren't scared. Mm -hmm. right. They're not scared to pull these things completely apart and piece them back together. They're also not scared to care what their buddies think. That's that's exactly too. So this, uh, the, uh, like, I noticed a lot of this. These guys are, they're like they have to do it to be accepted or something like that. Mm. Like a like um, I don't know if I'm saying this right, but like, you'll see a mini guy, mini truck guy, and he'll just go do this crazy mod just to do it, just mm -hmm. to be extreme, just to be different. Mm -hmm. Might not look good, might not work, that's, but I've he seen did that plenty it plenty of times. Yeah. Right? And me? then, huh? Is that talking about me? No. Oh. <laughs> no other <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, but that uh, also can that also can be um not problematic but it, it can also go the other way too because then you start doing stuff to be different like you said that just don't flow so like you, there, there's yeah yeah I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying that there are ebbs and flows with everything just saying just because you can doesn't mean you should right, right right but you have to learn that you can't but before you know that you shouldn't have. Right. Right. So you, if you're going to like, I don't know, extend your bed and put it a triple axle under it and you're like, yeah, that sounded like a good idea. But now, yeah. now that I look at it, it wasn't that bad, good of an idea, but you still had to do it. And many truckers do it. Right. Right. They will go to the farthest extent mm -hmm. and cut their trucks up. And maybe it's a value thing. Like oh, I got this truck for a thousand bucks. So I'm going to cut the whole ever living crap out of it. And if it doesn't work, I'll just go buy another thousand dollar truck. Yeah. yeah, no, that's true. And then that, and you're right. Cause then now you're right. Cause if you had a 59 Apache, you're not going to do that. You're going to no. be like, no, this, this no. you can't, I'm not, I can't cut this thing up. And you know, cause yeah. now you can't get into those trucks any, at any really cheap price at all. So you're already out of the gate buying an expensive project. So you're not going to go, I'm going to add a third axle to this 59 Apache. Yeah, and, and, and it's also like keeping true to, even if you're a mini trucker and you're like, I'm going to bag and body this, but you're keeping true to the older truck mentality, I guess, mm -hmm. you know? Like oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep like, I'm gonna put a Chevy V8 in this I'm gonna well, yeah you know I think you're, like, you're not true gonna to do, like, go to extreme because some vehicles you just don't do that to like you wouldn't buy a '64 Impala and like shave the taillights that yeah that oh yeah I see what you're saying yeah totally yeah because that would be wrong <laughs> and, 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 yeah and so these trucks are more hot rod classic so yeah. the mentality has to be different by owning one so us as mini truckers can sometimes. We do make fun of certain things, like, oh, you didn't do much to that truck. Well, mm -hmm. some things you don't need to do much to. Right, yeah. and that's the point that you were making, because, like, you, you you summed it up perfectly. You're like, you can take a pretty much stock C10 or, or any, any one of these trucks, 
and you can take it and people can be like, oh, that's a cool mm -hmm. old truck. If you took a stockish 2004 standard cab Toyota, you know, Tacoma to a show and on maybe not on stock wheels, but maybe on stockish wheels off of something else, people are going to be like, okay. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it is changing yeah. though. Cause yeah, like, uh, um, if you, like, if you took a 80, you know, a turbo eighties Toyota pickup factory that's turbo mm -hmm. and, and you took it to a show completely stock and it had the turbo wheels on it. Like people are going to appreciate like, Oh, that had that trim. Oh my God, that truck had factory power windows. I do that with Mazdas. Yeah. Like um, having so many Mazdas, uh, I started to, to nerd out on them and like starting to, to find, like one of my favorite things to do was I'd go to the junkyard to find parts, but then I'd look at all the Mazdas and find all the weird, like different iterations of, of these things. Like you would find a, a standard cab 2200, but it has a 26i cluster in it for mm. some reason, stock. And then, like you look at the um, like a like a twenty two hundred with a twenty six i trim stock, like all these weird like different combinations. And yeah. those are and those are the trim lines that that the C ten you can are. find the C tens, and they've been around for so long. Like the square bodies were around from seventy three to eighty seven, I think that's right. And yes, there was so many different. So you're just like, oh, I have like uh, Ronnie's. I don't. I forgot what trim his is, but it, that the orange one, the orange one, like that's factory paint. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, I don't I don't know what that one's called, but it was orange slice one that he cut yeah. up and then shrank it down. But that but that that graphics yeah. So paint that's a trim. So you have these certain trim lines that it's fun to go find. Right. And you don't want to like would you want to shape like sand that down and paint it, or yeah. would you want to keep it, or do you just want to find a, a basic one and sand that one down and mm -hmm. keep it? So, but it's starting to come around with the mini trucks. Like I said, if I walked around to a show and I saw a Toyota. Um, pickup that had factory ac fact an early 80s factory this you're just like oh man like don't super do clean, anything like to super that. mint don't clean. do anything yeah. to that a really good example was that uh isuzu out of lst mm -hmm. that white one on on just just it was i don't even think it was bad i think it was just static mm -hmm. dropped on on billet wheels and everybody would come and this truck was on the other side of the the show and everybody would come back to the booth and say dude did you see that isuzu back there yeah it's yeah. sick it yeah. has the stock graphics on it it's so super see, clean you're yeah seeing so, the transition yeah of of this happening yeah in the mini truck world and, and in another 20 years it's going to be a completely different oh i think so when you have world. like these shows are specific for those trucks of course but that's an average of 45 years old mm. in that group between these trucks and like 73 to 87 they said that's the biggest production of trucks of that style of anything else right yeah they made millions that, and millions. millions and millions of that truck so imagine if they did that for these Mazda trucks or Toyota trucks only. You could go to a show like that where 500 Toyota trucks show up that are 40 years old. And yeah, they, the they stock ones would be sick. You're like, oh, that one's cool, but it has this on there. I think it's harder to to really realize just because that doesn't seem realistic. Like, I don't think there's going to be that many trucks that can gather up mm -hmm. as big as the Chevy trucks do. Like, this. It's, it's starting to. There's it, this thing in Long Beach called Toyota Fest. Yeah. And that's what it is. But it's, it's but it's cars and trucks. It's cars and trucks, but it's the same sentiment where yeah. it's like... Older just, only, though. It's not like yeah, old, newer mm, stuff. Is I, it I don't Toyotas? Know, I don't know the, the specifics of it, but I do know... I'm Well, I mean, Eric took his, his uh, 98 or whatever his is. So I don't know what the specifics are, but it's the sentiment that it's a gathering of all just Toyota trucks and people are nerding out over specific. But it's not a gathering of just Toyota trucks. It's or a, a Toyotas and Toyota. Yeah, but general. they have they've been doing that with VWs and things like that oh, forever. That's a good point, yeah. So like, but to where and it gets to specifically just the trucks. I see. Man, we might get there one day. It will be there one day. I yeah. I don't know if it'll be as large as this because of uh, they just didn't make as many Toyota pickups. Maybe they did. Yeah, I, I think know. they did. But not in the. But they they go away faster because they rust faster. And people, uh, well, yeah. The East Coast ones don't last. They just fall apart. Mm -hmm. You know, they're. Um, yeah, the metal's so thin that you don't see. Like if you go out to the South and the East Coast, you don't see Toyota pickups and like '80s trucks driving around because mm -hmm. they they just disintegrate. Mm -hmm. Whereas yeah. you see them on the West Coast and the South. Yeah, yeah. The South I mean, that's just like, that's always been the case. Like, yeah, the but it's West different Coast with like because you can still find a, a C10 if it's sitting in a barn. Mm -hmm. Or sitting in a like field. <laughs> that was the no, thing. Like, it's like I in in the last episode with Will, I just casually mentioned that I have two C10s. I have a sixty three and a seventy eight or so something. Those, something. Those sitting there will last forever. But right. if that if that was a Toyota and it was sitting outside and it was in like Michigan or something like oh, that, yeah, it'd be oh yeah, it'd, it'd be gone. It would be gone. It would be, gone. be, gone. It would be yeah. part Swiss of cheese. the earth. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Yeah. The earth <laughs> has reclaimed it. You so know? there's just less trucks in general. I don't know. There's a lot of variables to it, but. Um, 
you know, in the end, we you just got to have fun. Oh, for, oh yeah, that's what that's what all of this boils down to. That one thing is like you're just out with your friends yeah. having fun, yeah. and whether it's C10 shows or mini truck shows or hot, I mean, any kind of label you want to put on yeah. it, that's what it's about. And no one does it better than the professional fun havers. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, not just playing, we're keeping keep going. No, yeah, keep no going. we're not done yet. I think yeah. we had a good time though. This trip was fun. What's uh? It's 11. We got to be out of this room in an hour. We got plenty of time. Yeah, like 30 more minutes. We could yeah. got plenty yeah. of time. We don't, we don't, yeah, we got plenty of time. Yeah. We don't have to be. We, we, don't, have, we don't have a 10 hour drive home. We can skate through this. I show. only have a four-hour drive home. That's what I love. I love it when when Brian comes out to the uh, comes out this way for shows. And I was kind of bummed because this year they're not doing the um, the relaxing in the Northwest show this mm. year. So I was like, man, I'm not going to get my annual of Brian having to come out my way to go to a show. But this filled it. You had to come out here and pick me up and to come to a show. It's fun. You don't have to drive. Huh? Oh, it's great. We didn't have to pick you up. That's true. We, we did. wanted. To he didn't want. Oh. He didn't want. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, yeah. My gotta convince. My gotta convince you. Be like, come on, man, just just go. Pick I want to take him out and cruise my truck. Yeah, I said that. Yeah, it was sick. It was hundred percent. It was, 100% it was sick. cool. It was total fun. Because I was like, oh, Brian, come on, you're not coming. You're like, no, I'm gonna stay. I was like, all right, <laughs> let's go. The, one of the uh, one of my favorite parts of all that was is like sitting in your truck and just driving mini trucks for so long. And those are like, you know, cruising around in those. It's so big in the cab, but then your hood is giant. Oh, your hood is huge. It's like a that boat. That was the coolest thing. It's I'm like, like a boat. You're cruising, rah, and then there's just this giant hood yeah. out in front of you. It's, yeah, it was sick. I think the hood's like half the size of my bed, if not more. Like, it's almost <laughs> as big as my bed is. So it's It's, it's, it's crazy. big. The cab is huge on that thing. You don't really realize there's so much room how in big it is. When he was loading it on the trailer, I was like... Look, looking on yeah. both sides of the truck, I was like, this truck is big. Yeah. They it's are, like it's wide. It's wide. Man. And I don't think you think about that because of the skinny butt bed. Yeah, and I think the bumpers also push them out a couple yeah. more inches on each side, too. So so that is a great segue because we were just, while you were out doing the part thing, we were sitting here like, okay, okay, what do we ask next? So the we want to talk about poised hipster. Yeah. Why? Why what po- does it mean? What does it mean? What does poised hipster mean? Are um, you a hipster? Is the truck well, a hipster? I think it will. So here's how it came about. He said he said it's because of the the hips of the bed. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, that's how it started. Okay, but then like I've kind of uh, just accepted the hipster vibes in it, and I'm just like, well, I want to be I a think hipster. It's- <laughs> <laughs> no, but so it's um, let's see. I think it was the Severed show a couple years ago. It's been a couple, been a few years now, probably like five, six, seven years ago, when I first had that truck at least starting to bag it. Um, I laid it out, but I just only had my like personal Instagram page. And I was like, well, if I get a lot of followers, like I still post my kids and stuff on my personal page. I was like, I don't really want everyone having to see my life mm-hmm. and care. If they're, if they're showing you know up I mean? to see your truck. And I wanted a page just for my truck because there's mm-hmm. a lot of stuff I've done. And the page at Poise Hipster, I've posted pictures from the very start like stock pictures, everything we've done up into what we were doing last night and everything far and few between. Um, so the poised hipster came just poised because perfect poise mm-hmm. and kind of all our guys. All, on all your guys have it's that. It's poise yeah. or it's PP underscore like on PP Moonbeam or poised hipster. There's like poised Ernie, you know, mm-hmm. P poised Jeff, PP Prez. So everyone's on there. So um, I was thinking like, well, what can I call this? Or do I call this like poised Moonbeam? Do I call it poised uh, 76, too low for you or something, mm-hmm. right? And so I was like, well, maybe something with the hips. And I was like, maybe I'll call it like uh, Shakira. Yeah. The hips don't lie. And I was like, no. So then something here, then um, one of my buddies in the club, Kevin Wilson, he has the K5 blazer. I think he texted me. He's like, why not like the hipster? Like, that's pretty cool. You're kind of hipster too. And I was like, I like that. Like, I like it. So. That. That name alone kind of just like pointed the direction of what I wanted to be, right? And I really don't even know what the definition of a hipster <laughs> is. Like, I don't know if I qualify under it. Yeah. Um, I, I, but I just know like my idea of what a hipster would be and like being hip and like just having cool different stuff, but it all kind of flows. And that's why I chose the, the plaid style fabric. Oh, um, okay. Like kind of like a flannel. Yeah. So yeah, kind of like a flannel and like uh, some people wanted to do... Too much light. Are you setting the mood or what? I just wanted to get that light off my face. I don't know because if the TV that we're looking at is a correct um, yeah, portrayal, it looks, it looks a little. Looks like I have blush exposed. on. Yeah, well, it was it's it's brighter out here than it was earlier. You interrupted my story. 
Go ahead, poise hipster. Poise hipster. So I used a, uh, I found a, a plaid type fabric from uh, SMS Fabrics out of Oregon or something, but they, they are plaid out of Oregon in a truck right? called yeah. Hipster. Oh my gosh, it's all fitting it's together. It's all fit together. So it's uh, <laughs> it's it's new old stock, uh, 1976 would happen to be the really? same year, but it's 76 Porsche, like oh, Porsche wow. uh, race car type fabric that uh -huh. plaid. I ordered a bunch of samples. Like, oh, this blue and green is pretty cool. So. From there, I just kind of said, like, I want subtle touches, like different things that people wouldn't notice. So that's why I got like that chain steering wheel. Yeah. Oh, I, right. And I, it's I not a tiny chain steering wheel, but it's a comfortable enough steering wheel. You could drive, I mean, long distances, anything more than a couple hours, like kind of resting your, your hand over the wheel. Mm -hmm. Like I've gotten bruised coming back from your guys' show just from holding it on there because it's just metal. Mm -hmm. um, it gets hot, but it's so cool. So I just kind of went off that and just like, that's where the hipster came from, at least, is... Uh, yeah, the uh, poise, perfect poise, and hipster. Yeah, hipster. I know, I from the it. hips, but then now it's turned into like, yeah. Because it is, I guess the definition of a hipster is just something that's like different. Yeah. Right? So it is. Or even I like think that, that style, like I was wearing joggers just. Yeah, joggers, oh, yeah. white vans, and a, and a flannel t-shirt. We, we need to talk about. And a man bun. Just really quick. And that's a perfect segue into our other questions that we Segways. had. Segways. So, Have you like, had a Segway? No, never been on one. They, they look fun. Did you know? Did you know the own the guy who uh, started Segway died because he drove his Segway off a cliff? Paul Blart. No, the guy who invented the Segway died. Oh, really? Yeah, he died riding a Segway and lost control and went off a cliff. Like the guy. That I don't know if that's driving true. You can Segway you, fact check by a cliff. You guys, please fact, fact check. check. How fact check that below and let us know. How about the guy that invented the like forward detection collision warning? And Look, like, hey, I'm going to stand in front of the car and it's going to stop. And the car didn't stop. <laughs> That's too bad for that Rogan guy. Rogan needs to say, Look that up, Jamie. And then Look that Jamie, up, Look that not, up not Brian. Not Segway owner. He said Segway creator. Segway creator. So, but what I'm saying okay, is, back so to back, to, back to the Segway that I was talking about, ca talking from like your style. So, First of all, I love that your one of your nicknames is the Mexican Easy E. Yes. Oh, that's my wife why, hates it, but yeah, I get oh, it. your wife hates I it. I get it though all the time. <laughs> I love it, I dude. I would, run, I would if someone if I was just doing that and someone has said, "Hey, you look like the Mexican Easy E," I'd be like, "Yes." Yeah, thank I, you. I, I very feel much. like thank you. <laughs> By the HIV way, HIV negative, the, but thank you. The owner did die um, off, a cliff? off a cliff. I was right. Look at that. I'm not lying. Yep. Um, okay, so then, yeah, so so you, your style, you know, your truck has style, you have style. So we talked about the nickname of your truck. Now, Moonbeam, how did that come about? Or Moon, because I noticed moon that, beam. like, yeah. like new, you, you uh, the Moon, just kind of, like, hanging out with you this weekend, I noticed that it, it really kind of goes into everything about it's you. It's everything, yeah. yeah. It's all details with everything. So I've had a lot of nicknames growing up, um, you know, just Mikey, um, um, whatever else. So it kind of came this way. It's, it's a long ways about, but uh, my family and my nieces, my, my cousins, their kids, uh, they all call me hot dog in my family. That started probably 20 years ago when I was like 16. Uh, one of the kids started calling me hot dog. And so now my nieces and nephews call me uncle hot dog. And awesome. I don't know where it came from. They just call me hot dog. Um, so when I went to Sunset in California and I was with them, you know, they all put their nicknames and they mm -hmm. painted on their back window. Yeah. And they're like, well, what's your nickname? I was like, well, it's not cool to give yourself a nickname. So like my family calls me hot dog and you're like, no, we're gonna call you weenie. So they oh. used to call me weenie. <laughs> and, uh, it, that was pretty cool. We rode that one for a while. And then it wasn't until, uh, Cruise to the Pines one year we were hanging out and, uh, it was like 1 AM or something. I'm with, uh. Brett Taylor and uh, Kurt from uh, Severed. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, the guy, yeah, I know you. Yeah, you know Kurt. Yeah. Forkwin. Forkwin. Yeah, yeah. Um, with the Cadillac. Yeah, a bunch of other people were all hanging out, and, like, I had scraped my Sunset logo just because there wasn't a Sunset in Arizona. I didn't really know much about car clubs, let alone to have my own chapter, so I just, like, respectfully called Bob Hayes and was like, hey, man, I... I don't, I, I, I don't know what to run a truck club. Mm -hmm. So, like, if there's no one here, like, I don't want to be the only person. So, I don't know, I, I scraped my logo and was without anyone for a year. So, this was in between that time. So, I wasn't Sunset and I wasn't Perfect Poise. And so, we were hanging out and they're like, so what's your nickname? I said, uh, like, we have too many mics. We need to call you something else. They're okay. He's like, 
And you're not in sunset anymore, and you don't seem like a sunset guy anyways. You're like the opposite. So you're like a moon something. And you look like a hippie. So you should have been named Moonbeam or something. And so that's where Moonbeam wow, starts. So cool. it started with him, and then everyone else kind of in perfect poise. So I would say, yeah, my, my truck club gave me the nickname about 12 so the, years ago. So then, like, your construction company is me. Yeah, so I stuck with that. So I, I uh, let's see, at the same time, I've always done, like, I've always dabbled in graffiti and spray painted my name and wrote my name on oh, different you, stuff. Oh, do you used to write graffiti? Yeah, oh, so I, uh, I would write myself as Moon. Just I kind of clicked. They're like, well, yeah, this is cool. I could, you know, these are cool letters, M and, and these. So I used to write Moon, but I was like, well, I don't want to get tracked back to me. Mm -hmm. So I started writing it Mune, like M-U-N-E. Uh-huh. But then I went and decided to name my business <laughs> Moon Construction. That's it's like so a play funny. on words. So like people will call up and be like, hi, I'm looking for Mune Construction. And I'm like, oh, it's Moon. It's just spelled oh, Moon. Oh, see, I called it, it Moon. I said Moon too. I said Moon too. So I, it's, Mune I too. call it Moon. So I, uh, that's cool. It's just that's, cheaper that's for so me to funny. just keep you know, it. So yeah. now it's like, it's really taken over my life. And like, I yeah, collect really Moons, cute. any artwork of Moons I find. Uh, on my birthday is June, so I'm a Cancer, and like on the horoscopes, they're called a Moon Child. Oh, really? So, and you're like immune. And I'm immune to bullshit. <laughs> oh wait, Whoa, wait, no, hey! Gonna... <laughs> <laughs> uh, now you're gonna make him do beeps on the edit tonight. There's only one. No, I've been good the whole the time, and I knew I can get away with just one. So <laughs> you get one f bomb, but don't use it yet. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. You get one f. It's like the. It's like a movie. Like they only get a certain amount. Yeah, of if you could be, you could be PG thirteen if you only say the f word once or something. Yeah, so save yeah. it. Save it for when it really counts. No, don't do it. Don't do it. No, don't do it. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, it's 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 cool that you were saying that. Like, uh, I've actually been getting really. I never wrote graffiti at all throughout my life. I've always admired it, but I never yeah. wrote anything. But just like in the last like six months or so, I've been obsessed with graffiti yeah. and graffiti writers, and and especially the Los Angeles guys and stuff like that. And it's, you said, it, you just described that exactly like a writer describes something. They're like, I needed a name that didn't track back to me, but look cool. And the letters, like there's this uh, graffiti artist named Saber. Yeah, yeah, I got Saber. Yeah, and then yeah. he, and I remember watching I a, a video thing. about why he came up with Saber. And he's like, well, it's like the S is has this great shape and mm -hmm. the A and the B. And, and the way the letters combine. Yeah. And, and then you said that, that sounds just like a Because yeah, I've always writer. been dabbling in the art and... And I know we're kind of going off track, but I really want to talk about how, like, I've met Brian and then really got to know you more. Yeah. Well, and it yeah, all kind of starts back to art. And, like, that, I've always liked art. I've always liked drawing. Like, uh, and when I started getting into electronics and skateboarding and stuff and seeing, like, oh, we got video cameras and stuff. I, I told you guys, some yeah. of the first videos I used to do were with my parents' big over-the-shoulder VHS uh, camcorder. And the battery didn't work, so you had to have the plug-in wall charger on it. So I'd have like a hundred foot extension cord that we'd go to the school and like find a spot and be like, all right, so well, you need in. filming, or I try to hold it down like the handy cam you used to have, like hold it and skate. And I'd be like, oh, stop, stop, we got unplugged. So we would like cancel, we would do editing off there. Uh, and then I've always just dabbled in electronics when I had a chance to go to school. So I first, my first major was business administration, then I changed and I went to Cal State for nutrition, then uh, got tired of that, came back to Arizona, and that's when I finished for, um, it's just an arts degree for uh, graphic design, digital media. I was going to school, I wanted to do, I went more of the photography-based uh, path instead of the video and 3D rendering-based path. So the photography I learned a lot of in classes, so I just like gadgets. Mm -hmm. And so when I started picking up stuff, and I've been watching your guys' stuff for a while, and you know, Low Life Video was the first time I met Brian. And when did we even meet? It was after you moved to Arizona, obviously. Mm -hmm. And I think at a couple shows, uh, you know, Ernie Baca was called you his best friend all the time. So <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I need my best friend from uh, the high desert, or Palm, Palm Desert, wherever you guys were staying at that time. So. Uh, yeah, we started hanging out with you, and I was like, hey, what are you, what are you shooting over here? What are you, you know, yeah. the, the typical tech talk guys do, yeah. and it's like geeking out, like, what, man, is that the Rode, uh, 211 mic? And you're like, no, dude, this is a 311 mic. <laughs> so, just talking, I think we kind of clicked, and, uh, I think, what, what was like our first little date that we had where we hung? Was it you coming and hitting me up? Or was it us hanging out at Tray 5 when you were filming? Was, you would come over to Tray 5. Yeah, because they're in between my truck and stuff. Yeah, right? and then that time uh, I went over to your mom's house and we filmed yeah, your truck. Yeah, and that was uh, part one. 
And you're like, plan this whole day. He's like, we're gonna film, it's gonna be real quick. Then he shows up and sets up everything, goes, I forgot some stuff for my camera, so let's just go to my house real quick. Oh, yeah, and his yeah, house yeah. is like 35, 40 minutes Were away. You, you no, it was close. But it was a, I went right at the El Mirage. Oh, okay. We did like eight hours of filming, and he's never even dished out more than 30 seconds worth of That's footage. That's because you changed your <laughs> whole thing. That's what you said, yeah. yeah. He filmed the whole thing, and I'm like, hey, I, um, I should just release the unedited interview of that. Yeah. You That's should. A, yeah, I think you should. Did you, did you happen to find it's the right thing here. that I'm talking about? All yeah. the different Do you want to see? Yeah, I do want to see. If it's a. Play the sound in it? No, it won't oh, play the no. sound. Uh, no, so it doesn't matter. Did you see that? <laughs> <laughs> the Mexican this easy. Is yeah. Yeah. Looking yeah. Too. We're watching, so if you guys are listening, if you go to Grinder TV's YouTube channel and type in We Miss the Streets, the pandemic mix, and go to the end, like 10 minutes in, that's where that's where this is. Okay. Yeah, this is like the first interview he did with me. Yeah, and you can tell, like, uh, and Mike's I've never truck. done any interviews. You've got your homie chromies on there. I got the homie chromie, oh, the first set yeah. of US yeah. mags I you had got on your, that truck. Your bumpers don't look nearly as good as they do no. now. When my bed done, yeah, my bed was done and painted. Your bed was done, but your interior was not done. No, I still had that first bench seat I had in there. Yeah, so the right after this is when you did the... I ripped it out, and I ripped yep. the engine out, redid the bumpers. And then I was like... Like, I have like, let's film it. I have cool rolling footage that I, I'm actually what I'll do is I'll edit the rolling footage um, and I'll just throw something together. Yeah. Like for probably some Instagram reels or something like that. So play it. Let's let it roll. I can't because you can't hear it. You can't hear it. Actually, you know what? Well, I mean, it doesn't matter because we'll still just play Unless, it because I like this part right Yeah, but we're, we, he has to edit this tonight and get it. Oh, out okay. Tomorrow. That's true. We got to hurry up and get it checked out, huh? Yeah. And, um, you know, Frank, how it depends on how froggy Frank's filming at home if he wants to throw all these photos. Of what we're talking about up on there. If you thing. can get them to me, I could I could throw them up on there. Yeah. Well, yeah. just yeah. Um, he'll on their way home. So I'll send you pictures of we'll, what we'll, the Colorado. The Colorado. Colorado. We don't need to talk about this now. We'll talk about it on the way home. Okay. Yeah. Well, okay. Yeah. We'll talk we have about hours that. to to. I guess that's yeah. 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 We have minutes. To Four hours yeah, well, until um, we get to my pad. Next end and get late checkout. It's fine. Well, look, the memory card's out. Just kidding. <laughs> Do you want to talk about the bum that ran into my truck? Yeah, let's talk well, about, let's talk about you a lot of good stories. First, we need to talk about how hard I went at Frank's house fr Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm like, I, nice uh, to meet you. <laughs> I over-medicated on the way to his house and slammed like four beers instantly and then uh, medicated and then, again. And then you had a then meeting then with the dirt. Just like real quick, like, I'm going to go pee. I, 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 can, I can pee over here outside. He's like, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> All right. So I go and like hold on to the fence and I'm like, Pull yourself together, Mike. Like, <laughs> next thing you know, I'm on the ground, and you guys are, like, are you all right? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm fine, dude. I uh, thought you basically. So we're sitting on uh, Frank's porch, uh, on the table, just kind of eating some pizza and talking and stuff. And it's dark, and then mm -hmm. Mike's fell, <laughs> and I thought he looked like he stepped back into a hole. And then I told Brian, we're gonna have to bury this man. <laughs> we are going to. Um, we're gonna put. Frank him has a lot of property that we could utilize. Uh, yeah. As burial grounds. Yeah. Mike was just going to become one with the compound. Because yeah. at that point, I was not not coming to the show. No. I was not going to let you... Dying. Dying. <laughs> no, you're like, we, got, we got his truck, guys. Yeah, yeah. So instead of you driving Frank around last night, it would have been you. me driving. <laughs> right Woo! We would have been taking turns. How do you know I, my dying wish wouldn't have been to let Frank drive and not you? Oh, Frank could have drove. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, so... <laughs> Yeah, you, you saw your perspective. My perspective is like, oh, shoot, man. I went way too hard the first night. Like, these guys are going to make fun of me the whole trip. for. But no, I realize we're in a good spot. No judgment yeah, here. Yeah, I'll put <laughs> nine, zero. We've obviously <laughs> all been there. So, so yeah, so that, Frank, that Frank was a fun Frank might have been there in that night. same spot before. First night of the Oh, yeah, <laughs> definitely, 100%. No, so that, that exact but, same spot yeah, in your house. Yeah. holes there. <laughs> <laughs> There's already a divot first in my night, body. Uh, legendary at the compound. Uh, next day is uh, cruise to Ventura. Uh, unloaded my truck, jumped in. Uh, then we pulled over, got gas. Frank jumped in with me. Now we're coming back, check in. Did, did we have the chicken that day? The hot yeah, chicken? Yeah, that was, that was Friday. Yeah. So that we was went chicken. straight to the show. Go to the show, um, get the booth, like unload the booth stuff, drop the trailer, and then we're like, we're going to need to eat some lunch. So me and Frank like hot chicken. And so we were going to go to Buffalo Wild Wings, but we saw, oh, there's a hot, hot chicken spot. place. Let's go there. Yeah. Okay, we got yeah. hot chicken, and then we were... Walking back to my truck, and we were saying, "Dang, that hot chicken was really good." Da 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 da. da. And I and I hear something off in the distance of uh, someone yelling, yeah. saying, "I'm gonna eat your brains!" <laughs> and I was like, "Hey guys, eat your look at that guy down there pushing that shopping cart, screaming." Yeah, you say, "Oh, it's time to leave." 
We Look had, at this guy down here going crazy, yeah. like down far. And we had loaded everything from the bed, like the luggage, of, into the cab of my truck. Yep. So, so we had to get all that out. So yeah, the back eat my bed. brains guy didn't steal it. So yeah. we, yeah. We, so we're putting it in the bed, and I was like, "Okay, we we gotta go." So we get in the truck, we start it. I put it in reverse, and all of a sudden, that dude is right. I likened it to if anybody has seen the Terminator movies with the T one hundred T one hundred or T one thousand or whatever it is, and he's like. Ring, whoo, whoo. <laughs> and, and that was a homeless guy, but pushing a shopping cart. So, hoo, 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 I'm gonna eat those brains. Yeah. So <laughs> I put it in reverse, and the guy's now at my truck, and he's like yelling at me to move. And yeah, he's then, like six feet away, and he's like, "Move!" And I can just see him because I'm in the extended cab part of your truck in the back with just a little slider window, and he's "Move! You want to die?" And then I just see him. Run full speed from full six feet speed. and just push his shopping cart into the side of the tr- it, like everything in his shopping cart like flies out. <laughs> he like almost falls and he then hit he's the truck yelling so his hard. Face, like he hit the truck so hard it shook. Yeah, it yeah shook the, truck the truck shook. And he's I go, foaming at the mouth and he's just like, "What? Get out of the truck!" So I'm looking at him in my now river mirror and he is looking at me dead ass in the eyes. Yeah, yeah. and like, "What? You, get out! What? I'll kill you!" Whatever he was saying, and I, I had it in reverse, and I was like, "What do you do?" I, I don't s- know what to do. Right that was now. the longest like three seconds of my life was when you like kind of froze, and I was like, "What's Brian thinking?" Like, and I could see the wheels turning. I could you were sitting there looking in the rearview mirror, and I could just see the you played out all every situation. Every situation because you have a some of them end up you time time slowed down for me, you know, because so if a homeless person or whatever he was, he maybe he had a home and he was just. He's mm-hmm. the vagabond. Or whatever. Anyways, he not was, all who he travel was or on not. a lot of drugs. Go for sure. Definitely, right? So Methed up for sure. I am not on drugs, right? So if I get into a fight, I'm going to get tired real fast. <laughs> he's just not going to get T-1000. tired. T-1000. T-1000. Yeah, he's so going to transform. As he's like, I'm, I look in my mirror and he's, I'm going to eat your brain. <laughs> and it, so that slowed down while I'm like, and I hear you guys going, go, go. Go! Put and it in I'm reverse, like, Terry! Run yeah. him over! <laughs> run but, him but over! My brain slows down to the point where like, okay, I want to reverse and, and hit this guy with my truck. But then that doesn't... Then we... I don't like to be... like I like uh, to just do things. I don't want to stop my life. Mm-hmm. And yeah, like, this is true. Um, be, what is it called? Like, uh, like if I'm going somewhere, I just want to get there. Mm-hmm. I don't want to stop and, and spend time doing anything else. So I'm thinking, like, hey, if I if I hit the guy with my truck, the police are going to come, or something's going to happen, and now we just ruin the entire night. Oh, like, yeah. And then, okay, if I get out, this guy, for one, like, I don't want him, I don't want him touching me. Mm-hmm. He was pretty. Yeah. I thought he right. had, like, a Highlander sword underneath his oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you what don't know what he was packing. Yeah, because I was, like, telling the story to a couple people at the show, and they're like, I would have got out and beat his... And I'm like, what? First of all, this guy... Like, I have a nice, fancy hotel suite to go to after this. Mm-hmm. This guy has nothing. So he if I get out and lose. He has beat him to up, lose. he's just going to be like... He, it's gonna, Like you said, it's going to be he's like... Already at, like it's going to be the end. highlight of his day. He's yeah. going to be like, hell yeah! <laughs> like, he wanted to fight. Like, yeah. I didn't. He did. Right. And then the other thought was like... I'm gonna call the police, and then I'm like, they're not gonna do anything. Yeah, well, they're gonna. Yeah. They're gonna laugh. Like, oh, a homeless guy mess with you? <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Welcome to slow. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to slow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and then I was like, oh, what are we? And then I was like, Frank. Throw a Shasta at him. Did, wait, did you come up with a thing or did I, I don't know. I don't know. I think you did. I think, I think, I did. You did. Right I think yeah, they were because right. I, so I like because you didn't open. know you were like you were like processing what was happening. Yeah, and you're like you didn't know what to do. And I looked down and there's just this twelve pack. Of oh Shasta. no, you're like yeah, you're like go. I'm gonna throw the Shasta at him. Yeah, because <laughs> there's a twelve pack of diet Shasta soda at Frank's feet. That's already open. Yeah. <laughs> so you know when you take your grenade and you take the pin out. Yeah. Frank like grabbed the thing. And he's like, I just rolled I, the window, sat on the window as I was rolling, and I got just, out of the window and chucked it over. And the first one, I don't think it hit him; it missed. The, you didn't I, even know I you chucked the first one. Like, you were like through <laughs> the, the, the first one. The first one, I think, missed. So you <laughs> throw it, whatever, and then you like leave. And, and then I think Mike said, "Why don't we just circle around?" We're like, "Okay." Yeah. So we circle around, and he's like, again, like T100 after us. And then we come around. And I'm like, "I'm gonna throw another one." So I take yeah. another one. <laughs> yeah. Like, take chuck that. It over the uh. truck. And again, it didn't hit him, but it like hit the ground and exploded, exploded all over. Him. Yeah, and I said so, and then we left. The whole thing but happened like, so like, fast. I know, 
And it, maybe now that I'm retelling the story and like taking out a lot, I'm like, am I a jerk? It happens so like, fast. I just, I just was throwing sodas at a homeless man. I know. Imagine <laughs> someone like that lady in the van saw that. Oh, yeah. Like, then yeah, some lady yeah. was sitting yeah. in a van so watching this whole shit go down. Like, imagine someone not seeing the part where he hit my truck. Just she she sit, saw, yeah. Just seeing the uh, yeah. throwing sodas. Like, look at that but truck. He's just throwing sodas at that poor homeless guy. And you were driving so slow, though, like after, like, so yeah. you finally sat there for your three and a half seconds thinking of your whole life playing out. And then finally, you're like, all right, and you put it in drive, and then you start just pulling off, but you're pulling off like slow, yeah. like a mile per hour. And just like, what are you doing? Turn like, around. Wait, waiting to Frank to reload the shaft yeah. with the bum bombs. <laughs> reload, get another the bum, bum bomb. bomb. <laughs> the bum bombs. All weekend, we're like, hey man, you want a bum bomb? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So if you guys buy Shastas, they're now called bum bombs. Bum bombs. Bum bombs. But I was still contemplating, like, like uh, oh, maybe I'll just turn around and run into him. You were still processing at that point. Yeah, a little bit, you know. But he was like, "Come on!" I'm not. I, I'm not that. Cra- I mean, I can probably get crazy, but I wasn't that crazy. Now, if this was a regular person, not a homeless person, yeah, like some guy pulls up in his like Mercedes and he gets out and he hits his door against my truck. Oh yeah, I'm gonna get out and we're oh, and we're fighting. You'll fight a guy in a Mercedes. Yeah, because that guy has something to go home to, and if I punch him and in the insurance. face, he's yeah. But if I punch him in the face, he's gonna be like, he's gonna have to go home. And be like, this sucks. I mm-hmm. shouldn't have hit my door against him. Mm-hmm. If I get out and beat and hit that bum guy in the face, yeah, you just yeah, like you said, what's you just, he gonna, he's gonna like? He doesn't. He doesn't care. No. Yeah, he, just got he didn't ruin his day. He's like he did exactly what he what wanted. What if he knocked you out? What? I That's this exactly probably what, what would have happened. What if he grabbed you, threw you on the ground, yeah. and hijacked the truck with me and Frank in it? And we're like, no! <laughs> and now, and now yeah. me and Mike are just on this adventure with, yeah. with the with the T-1000 like, meth down guy. Going, going down the 101 at like 120 miles an hour, <laughs> yeah. and you both are in there like, what do we do? And you're like beating him, you're like choking him. Yeah, and he's just not. going out, keep beating it down. All over, and I'm just in the parking lot like, oh. This could have played out differently, but luckily we made it back. He might be walking around. So I think but then the whole time, we had been in the truck the whole time, so we don't know the damage. Yeah. Like, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We just yeah. assume the we whole side have, of like... the truck is caved in. <laughs> so we drive all the way back to the hotel the whole time, like kind of like processing what just happened. And then we get there, and we're like, okay, let's let's take a look. So let's see what happened. And it turns out it's a it's a scratch, like, th- like yeah, you can't three even inches. You can't, you can't even, even see it. it. That Titan built tough. Now yeah. you wish you would have brought... The whole time, Mike was like, I, we should have brought my Colorado. We should have brought my Colorado. Yeah, and then I was like, good thing we're not in the Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. The that was the only time, but like, uh, I wish we had the Colorado right now to drive home. Why? What's wrong with the titty? Oh, never mind. We got the titty? <laughs> the shitty titty. We're the oh, shit. Man, Me and Brian be... are the shitty titty committee. It's going to turn 330,000 miles this trip. Yeah, wow. Just towing. Yeah, it's completely Trucks. fine. Just, just the steering wheel is a little loose. I got a little, little I gotta fix that when I get home. Doors are a little loose. Beeps at you a little bit. Oh yeah, it gets angry it's at you. My truck does that too. Yeah, I've never heard that. My truck does it often. Maybe my truck, when it was parked next to your truck at your house, it was no, talking no, they're to talking it. to each other. They're like, hey, this is. They're, it's like uh, they're like telling each other like you know they're like abused people like do they do that to you too? <laughs> show, show me, show me on the on the toy. Show me on, where show they me on the you. toy where they hurt you. <laughs> oh yeah. man, what else are we talking about? Anything? I th- I we got to drive home. It's eleven thirty. Oh, home. we gotta we gotta but we gotta still load here. the truck up Trap and stuff. Up. You, yeah. saw, you guys pack? No, oh. we gotta uh, uh, we gotta take tear down up at five thirty. We gotta tear down all this equipment. Get out of here. We'll get out. Probably won't get out of here until 12 30. One. You guys got eight hours to get home. Well, from here, eight hours. From here. But we got to meet. We got to oh, go. We gotta but that's like, home. we still got to yeah. stop. We still got to drop you off. Maybe Angie will meet us. Are you three hours from here? Uh, Two hours. Okay. But yeah, she can She can also meet me too. I mean, we're all discussing this. We're discussing this. I know. Yeah. 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 Sorry. Sorry. Let's we're, take, we're, take us out. What's but no, this was cool. This was really cool doing this. Doing this. This was our first time doing the pod like mobile on the road. This was a lot of fun. We'll we'll do these more often um, as we travel and go to shows and stuff like that. It was a lot of fun. Thanks, Mike, for yeah. hanging out. Thanks for, for showing me an awesome weekend. Oh, I love it. I'm glad you truck. had fun, dude, because that was my blast. biggest thing. Is Thanks for fun. leaving me at the hotel to do nothing. You I just, wanted that's your, to. That's your favorite thing that's in the world. That's your favorite thing. I do like that. That's your favorite thing in the world. So I do. The relationship you and I have is we are a one two punch. We are the guys who go to the show and film and create content, and then I, you stay back, and then I go get the rest of the content out at night. <laughs> yeah, like a little shake and bake. Yeah. Shake Wait. and bake. Why is he the bake? Why can't I be the shake? Which are you, one, are the you movie? me fat like bake a cake? 
In the movie, which it's one a is reference. It's which a one reference. is is Ricky Bobby? Is he the shake or the bake? Uh, I don't know. I don't Probably know. the shake, right? But Brian is definitely Ricky Bobby. I'm the other guy. I'm John C. Riley, whatever the name of his character. Anyways, was. we're giving away a bunch of Chemical Guys products. We are. We shot. Uh, we shot a really fun commercial this weekend. We shot a couple little things. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Look out for we those. Did. Probably, yeah, yeah, they'll probably be out, out after this podcast, so look out for those. Uh, look out for this video soon from both of us. Um, I'm working on the Dream Big Drive Low show right now, so that'll be... This 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 uh, this uh episode will be on my channel, the Custom Life channel, so thanks for checking out the Custom Life vlog. Make sure if you're checking out the pod, make sure you like and subscribe. Uh, check out Grinder TV. Make sure you're following the Drop with Frank and Brian on Instagram. Follow the Drop on, on Instagram. Make sure I've got videos coming up. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta get dropping these, dropping my videos because there's more shows coming up to record. Yeah, what are you doing there, Mike? I'm just watching myself. I'm listening to you guys talk, but I could just watch you on the TV. So. Oh, okay. So yeah, so cuss. Uh, oh, also the giveaway. Like we said, we're giving away chemical guy stuff. So go to our websites, buy stuff. Every every five dollars you guys spend on LiveLifeCustom.com and Grinder-TV.com gets you one entry into the drawing. Uh, so do that. And Frank's gonna add a whole bunch of banners soon. I'm gonna have some more banners, some more merch. Uh, Mike, again, thank you very much for coming on. Drop all your handles. Mike's got a lot of handles. I got so. a lot of handles. I got a lot of stuff to say before I wrap this one out. Mm -hmm. Again, Michael Moonbeam here. You can follow me at Poise Hipster. Uh, Perfect Poise. We got some car shows coming up. I want to tell everyone about. We oh, got cool. yeah, Cruise go to the it. Pines. We do three a year. One in Australia. One in Phoenix. One in Washington. Uh, Phoenix got rescheduled. So next up is Washington, August twelfth. Um, in Washington, hit up the page. That's Northwest Cruise of the Pines, and then Phoenix Cruise of the Pines, October first. Uh, that's what we got. And then Dino's. I'll be at Dino's this year. My truck's on the artwork for that. So that's so cool. I'm gonna be at Dino's. This will be my first Dino's. Yeah. So you I'm always excited. catch us too. I, I'm on a lot of. I like. You know, Brian's local. We we get together a few yeah. times. Yeah. You're and do you're, stuff. Uh, you're definitely a, a reoccurring character. Yeah. So I like it. Yeah. Jumping on the channel with him. It's like. I don't do it for anything other than I just like the experience and stuff, and I have all these gadgets anyways for my work. And you we know, have we have a good stuff. time. Oh, we, we have, have a real, real good, good time. time. Good time. Um, we have an idea for some Mike on the mic shirts too, maybe for Grindr yeah, well, TV. I don't know yeah. what Mike on the mic is anymore because just you, I can pick when I do it. Like <laughs> no, <laughs> no one pays me. So Mike on the mic did one Mike on the mic at Dino's, and then he retired. No, I didn't. I did one at Ronnie's. And then remember when I carried the whole Grinder TV on my back and <laughs> filmed Northwest Cruise of the Pines by myself? <laughs> yeah. That was a good video. Yeah, did you yeah. edit that? No, I don't. I just, I just get the. I'm a, the I'm a filmer. The, I'm not an talent. editor. No. Oh, oh, yeah. I'm a filmer. I don't care what you do with my film. And talent. And talent. This is high class talent. Talent. The USDA choice. It is. Right it on. is. Well, cool. Well, all right, guys. We'll see you later. Thanks for checking out the show. <laughs> see you next week. Bye.